The Big Ten with two of the top six teams in the nation in the athletics preseason rankings, Purdue and Michigan State, who we have been speaking about. Illinois is the other ranked team. They check in at 14, and then future member UCLA is ranked 20th. As promised, we welcome in Andy Katz with Bruce and Rafael. Andy, we we had a chance earlier to talk a little bit about kind of how these guys see the conference, and it seems like the consensus was Purdue – then Michigan State, then kind of everyone else, but some everyone else is a little bit above some others. Do you see it the same way? Do you see it as essentially two teams to start the year? So I like to tier things, and I'm going to give you a top tier, like you guys just said, of a Title II, because Purdue and Michigan State, I think you can make a strong argument for either to be preseason number one in this league and Final Four favorites. You can make a strong argument based on the way Michigan State played, what they've got back, what they've got coming in, versus Purdue still needs to prove a lot after what happened last March. And then I'm not going muddled middle, magnificent middle, because (laughs) we've got depth here that really drops down to where there's no question. You're going to see up until 13-14, teams feeling they legitimately could play in the NCAA tournament. We're not going to get 12, but I think you could make an argument that at least 12 feel like they have a chance to be in the NCAA tournament. You guys agree with that? How deep do you think it is in terms of of tournament teams, Bruce? Optimistic. Oh, he's always optimistic. The glass is always half full. (laughs) I would tell you as a coach right now, all 14 think they can be in the tournament. You know, now on paper, can they? We're looking at it. It's a little tougher. But I think we're probably at 10. That definitely could be. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And and, and that could grow as it goes. Uh, Last year, the greatest example for me, last year we did not talk about Northwestern. (laughs) Not one minute. And I kind of asked you after, and and you were like, oh, I don't, you know. But – they had to have so many things go right. It, it went felt right. Like and, and it did. And, and, and guys they, got better. Yes. And they believed and they changed the, the way they The crowd got into it. The yeah. fans. They're my they, given was, this year. Yeah. They're a given to me. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I really like them and I like what they did. I think they can be good. I, I, there's no doubt. Ohio State, some other people, there, there's just question marks with the portal. You just don't know. And all the things we talked about, right. the chemistry, the toughness, it makes it really tough. I mean, I never went into the locker room in the offseason not thinking we would make yes. the NCAA tournament. Yeah. I mean, we were last place in the Big Ten, and we still went into that season think, thinking we will make it. Sure. But I look, at, I look at this group, and I look at teams one through seven. I think you have a really strong seven that can make a case. They're going to make it and then everyone else everything has to go right, right. you look at indiana you put all your marbles on your freshman mckenzie mbaco to average 15 18 points a game if he doesn't does indiana have enough that can score the ball you look at you look at teams like that you look at a team like michigan you bring in olivia nikamwa does he is he have the capabilities to be your number one option every single game after being so up and down last season so i think it's a strong seven and then i think everyone else if things go right, if things happen how they should, then they have a chance. What about in terms of – oh, go ahead, Andy. I was going to give you two teams that I don't think anyone's going to talk about today, but you're going to talk to their players and coaches that I think legitimately have a chance. One is Nebraska, and the other is, again, we said it last year, Penn State. Uh, do not discount the impact Ace Baldwin is going to have. He was the best player in the A-10, best defender in the A-10, he is a stat stuffer. There's no question that Ace Baldwin can take Penn State to potentially to the NCAA tournament. And I'm not alone in loving Kese Tomonaga. Uh, <laughs> look what he did this summer, though. He led Japan, essentially, in that game over Finland. He had 22 points, not just a three-point shooter, on the international stage in the FIBA World Cup getting Japan to Paris next summer, that was significant. He comes in, I think, as one of the best players in the Big Ten, and Fred Hoiberg, you'll talk to him later, is thrilled about what he has. Yeah, and they I thought they developed toughness last year. Yep. They guarded Fred. I mean, Fred was an offensive guy. He'll tell you. I coached against them. Right. All of a sudden, they had the – you know, their backs to the wall. They developed some toughness. They guarded people, and they gave them a chance. And now can they keep that going? You know what that's about, that culture. Can they keep that culture going? Can they stay healthy? Yes. They had a and lot of injuries. They were devastated yes. by injuries, right? But you get Juwan Gary back yeah, and, yeah. and an elite defender. And it was interesting in talking to Fred as last year went along because obviously in midseason when they when Bandamel got hurt and Gary got hurt, there was this feeling of, 
you know, what are we going to do? How do you keep your head above water? And then they they kind of redefined the way they played again. Like they had created this this toughness. They beat Creighton. There was all this this good feeling around the program. And then they they kind of made a little bit of a turn and and changed it in mid season. And but you talk about teams no one wanted to play at the end of last year. That was a team that nobody wanted to play, and you could see that carrying forward this year. And again, you have to fit what you do to the league. And I think Fred ultimately felt like that was the way that, that he could win in the Big Ten. Tominaga is one of the players I think everyone is excited about. He he is a player you just can't take your eyes off of. Who else beyond the obvious? I mean, everyone wants to see Zach Eady play and Terrence Shannon and, and Boo Booey and, and Jameer Young and, and these guys who were, you know, clear-cut unanimous preseason all-conference picks. But who else? Who could be some guys who could make a jump here? I'm looking at a guy like Trey Kaufman ran at Purdue. I mean, on their foreign trip this past, this past summer, averaged 16 points a game, close to six rebounds a game. He's become their legit second option. And I talked to Coach Painter a lot this summer he kicks himself a little bit from not playing TKR a little bit more last season just because of his ability to score the basketball and you see times Purdue struggle to score they throw the ball at Zach if Zach is triple team if they throw the kitchen sink at him if they're not making shots from perimeter they struggle and TKR gives them another option throw the ball down low or even give it to him on the wing and let him drive the basketball against bigger wings I was at a practice this summer and Zach was on the floor. It was a 10 minute stretch where TKR and Zach were guarding each other and TKR got the best of Zach every single time down the floor. Whether it was a post up, catch and shoot three, bring Zach out to perimeter, drive around him. So I think TKR would make a big jump for the Boilermakers. He definitely gives them more depth and if he has confidence and keeps that confidence it's important. Bruce Thornton uh, you know, how he finished the season last year, and yeah. he took that team, uh, big. you know, the Big Ten tournament. He played at a high level. You always look for a point guard play. And I'll go, Braden Smith, you know, I, I know you got to give, and I said it, and Matt's my guy and all this, but, you know, he took a, two young guards. They won the league by three games when they weren't even picked to. And those guys, they're going to be a better. I promise they're going to be better. And he's got it. I've said it last year. He's got some moxie. He's got yes. something to him, that little drive that makes you special. Well, I can't be on the set and not mention Rutgers. Um, <laughs> and, uh, look, we know about Cliff Amore. To me, Derek Simpson. He's had his moments. If he can establish himself as one of the best guards in this league, then Rutgers has a legitimate shot to be a tournament team. Yep. A lot's going to be on his shoulder and the newcomers, but Derek Simpson has to become much more of a consistent leader for Rutgers. And if that happens, they're going to be in the mix. And even a guy like Ty Rogers, you look at you look at media talk about yes. Illinois. They don't have a point guard. They don't have anyone that can set the offense. I look at Ty Rogers as a guy that can really bring the ball up, set the offense, but also just be a terrorizer on the offensive glass. Because you're asking your point guard to check out Ty Rogers. That's going to be a just a problem for any team that comes into Illinois. He's going to be one of the better defenders at the point guard position, being 6'7", 220 pounds, being athletic. I think he's going to make a big step. And I think with him and Terrence Shannon Jr., Coleman Hawkins, Quincy Guerra, Dane Danger. I think that is a really strong large athletic group for Illinois. Great size, there's the, no doubt. The challenge to me with that team is will the outside shooting get yes, better and yes. you kind of look at the numbers from their foreign tour and it, it's not clear yep. that it will and that's the issue with Rodgers, right, is yep. he doesn't give you a, a perimeter threat. Yep. But yeah, size-wise, bring people into the post and, and get yeah. to be really difficult to defend. He's a, a returning player, obviously, and, and a, a former Big Ten recruit. But one of the interesting variables is the transfer portal. I mean, Andy, you already mentioned Ace Baldwin at Penn State. Again, this is the player of the year in the Atlantic 10 and the defensive player of the year in the Atlantic 10. So this is a name the Big Ten fans need to be familiar with. You've mentioned a couple transfers as well. Who are some of the other players that aren't the freshman recruits that maybe people who follow recruiting see, but, but that are players who could be impact transfers in the league? Well, we mentioned Indiana, and we know about their guard play, but Clell Ware from Oregon was highly touted and, you know, for, for various reasons, never reached his potential last season in Eugene. If he comes in, and I know he's not been fully healthy yet in the preseason, but if he is, if he's a 15-8 kind of guy, then Indiana clearly takes a step up because they need someone, after losing so much inside, to be that inside presence. I look, oh, Go ahead. I look at Marcus Domas from uh, Illinois. Yeah, 1,600 points to sell at Illinois. This is a transfer that's coming in to win basketball games. He's been in big-time moments. He's made big-time shots, and I think he's a perfect Robman to go along with your Batman. You think about Terrence Shannon, Shannon Jr., and he just knows how to play the game. I think with him, can he accept his role? He yep. went from playing – 
35 minutes a game. Now all of a sudden it could be a little less. And can he fit in? And that, that's with all these guys. And we talked about it, the chemistry, fitting in, figuring out roles. And that's the fun of this time of year. Yeah, it's going to be utterly fascinating to see how some of the pieces fit together mm-hmm. at these various places. And th- these are answers you just can't get until you see them out on the court. But we're going to probe for some answers. We're going to try to get some. That's our goal over these next few hours. We'll get our visits from the players and coaches. Ohio State looking for a bounce back season. Chris Holtman and a couple of his stars stop by next. The Ohio State Buckeyes working hard at practice. You see the toughest team sets the rules and they are working on that toughness in Columbus coming off a surprising season and not necessarily in a positive way but a feeling obviously they can get things headed back in the right direction this year. Thrilled to be joined by Chris Holtman, Jameson Battle and Bruce Thornton. Let's put last year to bed first. I I think before we look ahead, can you put a finger on kind of what happened, like why it didn't go the way that you expected it to? You know, I think there were a number of reasons, Dave. Uh, more than anything, we were certainly a, a group that uh, that had our struggles in the middle of the season and then really at the end played our best. We just weren't, were not what we had been the previous five years, which has been a pretty good defensive team and a really efficient offensive team. That's kind of been our, our hallmarks. Uh, we were not that last year. I look forward to returning that this year. One of the things that really stood out, and I think, Bruce, maybe you can speak to this and, and how things have transformed this year, was on the defensive end because that's been such a part of your identity not just in your time as ohio state but in your time as a head coach period so speak to defense here first bruce like we see that that loose ball drill right that's about toughness it's about want to and that's what defense is about where have you seen this team take those jumps uh i feel like it just started started this summer Uh, i feel like the team came together uh, bonded very well to each well with each other and we understand that to win big games, to do big things in the uh, in the uh, in the league and outside the league, that you got to be good defensively. So I feel like when the whole team buy, buys into it, I feel like you'd be a good defensive team. Jamison, you obviously don't have the frame of reference of last year. You were you played for Minnesota. You transfer in this year. Give me a sense of the identity of this team because when you're when you're new on a team, right? You 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 have a different view than everyone else does. So when you kind of parachute in. What do you see in terms of identity and, and how that is forming around this group? Yeah, I think the biggest thing we look at is just toughness. I think from the moment the summer started to now here in the fall with, with practice starting, it's just toughness. And I think the biggest thing for us in, in order to be a good defensive team, even offense, uh, we have to be tough on the ball, we have to be tough off the ball, and we just have to play physical. And I think that's one thing that Coach Holtman uh, has preached to us, and that's one thing that as players we've embodied. And holding each other accountable is another thing that this team, you know, I think we're, we're really good at doing that, uh, not letting guys have bad days and understanding that, you know, everything matters uh, no matter what we do in the summer and no matter what we do in the fall, it's everything matters. You talked about the issues last year. Scoring inside was another one of them. And part of it is, I mean, Zed Key was banged up, right? I mean, barely lifted yeah. his shoulder yeah. above his head. So yeah. that tends to yeah. inhibit you from being a good scorer inside. But but still, it, it felt like that was an issue kind of from the outset of, hey, how do we create those easier points around the basket? How have you addressed that? Yeah, no, I think we, we there's no question we struggled to score. And like I said, our efficiency was was not what it had been right. the, pre, the previous five years. So I think that's been addressed. We've certainly done some things. Zed's uh, healthy right now. Good. I think uh, what, what Zed being hurt really did is it allowed a guy like Felix Akpara to come in and really – play well down the stretch and in particular in the Big Ten tournament on both ends but uh, interior scoring is going to be something that will be important it'll be important to keep to keep Zed healthy he battled through that shoulder as well as he could but it was time to shut him down I want you to brag about each one of these guys a little bit and yep. Bruce I mean down the stretch was playing yeah fabulously right yep. so kind of setting the table freshman point guard seems to me to be about as hard a spot as there is no question to be in in college basketball yeah so I I'm interested in your thoughts on how he evolved and then Bruce I want you to pick up on on how you feel you evolved well he was one of the four freshmen we were starting the last really 10 to 12 games of the season and he led the way there he really did Dave I think his ability to persevere through some of his own individual struggles and then come out and play as well as he was playing the last 10 games and he was instrumental in so many of those wins we had down the stretch and he's built on it in the offseason with his leadership and his uh, improvement as a player Bruce how did you feel like you improved or or kind of evolved maybe would be the best way to put it 
as a player from from stepping out there as a freshman in that very difficult spot to down the stretch where you were a player who no one wanted to guard? Uh, at first, it was a struggle. Um, I had my own obstacles I had to face. Um, just lose as a team and personal. So you're trying to understand as a leader, as a point guard, like when you lose that many games, you you take the um, you take the pressure on because you're the point guard, you're the face of the team. Yep. You got to have that leadership. So me just trying to persevere, kept fighting, kept my head down, kept working hard, and things just blossom at the end. I'm very blessed. I went through went through the struggles, uh, beauty with the curse at the same time. So I'm glad I went through it. I understand it, and now I'm just ready to go for this season. What about Jameson? So you, you pick up a player in the yep. portal who can score in bunches. Yep. What made him a, a good fit, and what have you seen from him? Well, just that, you know, and it, it was one of those deals where we, we did not anticipate uh, uh, adding a player uh, of his caliber. But I think w once we knew that Bryce was going to stay in the draft and um, we knew we were losing some guys to graduation, it made sense to get a guy who's proven to score the ball. I mean, he, he gave us nightmares and fits constantly. He was a guy you have to be aware of. Uh, and he's been a he's been a really really good addition with his maturity. Uh, we still have a pretty young team, so to have a, a guy that has his maturity and his ability to score the ball has been critical for us. What made this the right place for you, Ohio State? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is you know being in the transfer portal the second time. You want to go where you're wanted, and I think from the first phone call I had with Coach Holtman and Coach Diebler, uh, they wanted me, and the role that I had. You know, coming in is something that, you know, I've embraced and understand and being a leader and having experience in the Big Ten for two years. It's something that, you know, I'm willing to help this team and uh, give this team pointers and experience to to help us along the way and help us win games. I think the biggest thing for me is just being at a place where I can uh, help contribute to winning. And I think Coach Holtman has laid it out for me and understand what my role is and understand how uh, I can help this team. I do want to ask you very quickly about your freshmen because it's a highly touted class. You've had some one and dones here. I know you're not yeah. looking for another one and done, right? You're yeah. not wishing any of these guys away. But yeah. who do you think is most ready to play right now? You know, I think Scotty Middleton's shown the ability right now, Dave, to be able to compete on both ends consistently. He's he's really fit. He's got to get a little bit stronger. He's the young man I would point to right now that has the ability to maybe impact early. But I would expect all of them, uh, all four of them, to be able to impact. I don't know that we're going to need to rely on that group as much as we did the previous group. Right. And that's a good thing. That's what you want, both for yeah. them and for us. I think that's that's a good thing. You don't necessarily want to be starting four freshmen <laughs> down the stretch, is what you're saying? It's, it's uh, less than ideal. <laughs> <laughs> Less than ideal in this league, for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, guys, great to visit with all of you. Have a Thanks, really Dave. good year. Thanks for spending some time. Thanks, Appreciate Brandon. it, Dave. Back at Big Ten Media Days, and some of the intrigue every year centers around what everyone is wearing. And uh, here you see the question from Wisconsin basketball, how do we like the Media Day fits? I got to say, Connor, you're the early leader in the clubhouse. I said it earlier. I'll say it again. I mean, Chucky Hepburn, you look great. Greg, you know. You're fine, right? I mean, but Connor, holy cow, that's good. So, so tell me, like, take me through the process of getting the red suit. Like, how do you, how do you decide this is what I'm going to do? And then, I mean, that's not right off the rack, is it? No, this is. You <laughs> probably can't get this one straight off the rack. But, uh, I mean, uh, us three, we kind of got to customize a little bit of what we wanted. Yeah. And I knew that that Max and Chucky weren't going, going red, and I was like, I might as well like show off a little bit get a little school color in me yeah um so i mean i don't know just kind of picked out the whole red suit i mean i got the shoes yeah everything. the shoes yeah. were were really strong we showed those a, a little earlier too so yeah it's it's pretty impressive when he showed up in that chucky your thoughts did you know this was coming i knew the suit was coming i didn't know the shoes was coming. <laughs> so, you know, he definitely impressed me with that one but you know I love them. I, love I, them. I mean, I don't want you to, to tear a hamstring or anything, but is there a way that you can, can elevate the shoes right here to the, the camera? Maybe take one off? Can you? Pants are kind of see. I, I might know. have to take it off. Like, to see, like, I don't okay. know. I might rip my pants if I, I try to I don't, Yeah, I don't want you to do anything. Yeah. This is what we got, though. Yes. This is what we got on the feet right now. Those are really good. Okay. All right, let's talk about basketball. Uh, you bring back virtually your entire team. Right. Tell me how you can evolve when you do that like what what is the luxury that you have when you essentially know the personnel you're adding in a couple pieces and we'll talk about those pieces because they're really going to help you but but to have your whole starting five back in this day and age is virtually unheard of yeah i think the biggest thing dave is retention and i use that word you know all the way back to last spring yeah if we could keep this core nucleus together we rarely have a roster that doesn't have seniors on it 
last year we had a roster with nobody walking out the door to graduation. Yeah. So to have all these guys come back, knowing that they want to take another step this year and, and have a little something to prove, I think, based off last year, um, it was great to see. And it's a credit to these guys for sticking together, um, you know, and finding a way to have this roster stay together. And as you mentioned, we've added some pieces. But the most important thing, of, in addition to the pieces, what these guys had to get better and what they, how they attack the off season, how they've approached the summer uh, so far this fall. They've headed in the right direction and now you get a chance to play some games. Chucky, I'll ask you, and I'm interested in Connor's take too. You heard Coach say these guys had to get better. In what ways have this core group, has this core group gotten better? For sure. You know, me personally, uh, I've gotten a lot leaner. You know, I'm in more I noticed. than I have yes. the past couple of years. I've, this is the healthiest I've also been uh, probably since I've been at Wisconsin. So I'm really excited for that. This group, you know, we're just bringing back that toughness from last year. You know, if we could bring that toughness and know how to win games, learn learn how to uh, just put the, the foot on the throat on teams this year, you know, I think that's what we're going, we're going to be able to learn how to do. You know, that's what we're really excited about this season. You, you do look really good physically. In what ways do you think that can help you, having dropped a little weight and, and obviously sure. being a little uh, Defensively, stronger. I'm able to guard quicker guards, you know, stay in front of quicker guards, get around uh, ball screens a lot faster and a lot easier. Um, I'm really excited about that. And offensively, you know, I'm able to get up and down the floor a lot more, you know, uh, just pushing in transition, get to my spots, you know, um, come off the screens a lot more faster, a lot quicker. So that's, that's what I'm really excited about this season. Connor, kind of the opposite issue when you play as much as you did as a freshman, right, the physicality of the Big Ten, I think, is the big thing that, that strikes a lot of guys. And you held your own. But what did you learn about going through the league in terms of how you needed to evolve your body heading into this year? Yeah, it was a big, big eye opener for me. I mean, I knew it was going to be a big change going from high school to college. And, you know, I wasn't really sure how much I was going to going to play, you know, freshman year. Right. But, you know, kind of being thrown into the mix pretty early, you know, kind of forced me, you know, to learn and, and you know, kind of learn the ropes of, you know, how, how physical, how competitive, you know, how the speed is of college basketball, especially in the Big Ten. And, I mean, this this offseason I put on 10 pounds. And so it's something that, you know, I really wanted to set my mind to, to – to be able to get better and you know it's kind of developed you know every part of my game and, and your know, coach was something you know he was in my ear that that really kind of made me want to be able to you know to take my game to the next level and it really helped and, and you know helped me in the offseason you talk about these players need to get better the, the guys who were here last year like part of it was I injuries like Tyler Wall was never quite right I mean it just right. felt like a lot of things that could go wrong did go wrong for you but aside from being healthier aside from from physically like where do you think this team's taking the most steps I think just the what the experience has done for them, and a, and a lot of times experience can be a negative experience too of what didn't go well. So using that as motivation as they approach the off season, um, and and making sure that physically we got better, but mentally, as Chucky mentioned, the games we went, we had 23 games that came down to the last four or five minutes, and we go 13 and 10. If you can flip those numbers a little bit more. I think we're in a much better position. But this group this year is, uh, you know. Maybe we cannot have 23 close games. That would be <laughs> that, that would be, be a good good start. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, might help your blood pressure significantly. Uh, but it's interesting because historically, you and I have talked about this a ton, and I feel like we talked about even going back to when you were an assistant for Bo. Like Wisconsin always figured out a way to win those close games. As you said, you won more of them than you lost last right. year. So I mean, it's not like it completely went. We just had bad. a yeah. We just had a. a extraordinary amount that, yes. that were so close right. 23 and normal probably in a year you had 15 right so we we added you know almost 10 to that total right, right. Uh, tell me about the new players AJ store coming from st. John's yeah. really athletic player you've got two freshman bigs who I know you're excited about give me a sense of the additions here and, and how you think they're gonna yeah help I you. think you know they all bring something a little bit different you know AJ obviously comes in with a year of college about basketball experience and for him to come back home he grew up in Rockford, so to be yeah. in Madison is not too far from home, but he adds a dimension athletically to really help our lineup. Um, and then our three freshmen, really, it's Gus Yeldon and Nolan Winter up front, um, and then with the uh, John Blackwell in the backcourt. So they all bring something a little different, and it's it's an extremely competitive group. I know these guys can attest to the level of competition in practice has grown immensely, and that's going to push everybody's bar a little bit, but definitely those four guys have helped add to the mix. Who are the guys who have made the, the biggest jump in terms of those young players who you think could, could make an immediate impact? Yeah, I mean, honestly, all 
all three of them have made you know huge strides, especially since we first got here. Um, you know, John's fearlessness that he's shown right away, you know, is incredible, and that's something that that'll be huge for him. Nolan's made great strides. I mean, he's already you know starting to put on some weight, you know, as well, starting to understand things a little bit. Um, Gus as well. I mean, he's he's been playing great in practice. He's been doing his thing, and you know, I mean, bringing in AJ too, just the way that, that his mind's been clicking and starting to understand and process, you know, kind of our structure and our things of what we do. It's great to see, you know, how quick that they've been kind of coming along. Chucky, I'm giving you the last word. How do you define success for this team this year? For sure, we define it by just you know playing together. You know, we gotta play together to to be able to win. You know, we gotta compete, and um, you know, we just. Last year, you know, we knew how to compete, but we didn't know how to win. This, uh, and I think that's what our kind of, when we went to the NIT last year, you know, we kind of built that momentum going in for, to the NIT going into this year. So, you know, that's what we're all looking forward to. We're all brothers. We're all, we all have each other's back, and you know, that's what I love about this team. All right, fellas, looking forward to watching you two play and looking forward to spending time with you this year as well. Thanks, Thanks a lot, guys. Thank Best you. of luck. The Illinois Fighting Illini, they got a nice uh, luxury travel experience on their way to Big Ten Media Days. You see Terrence Shannon getting on the private jet on the way up to Minneapolis, where we are gathered here to preview the season. And Terrence Shannon, Coleman Hawkins, and Coach Brad Underwood joining me now. A nice, easy trip up here for you guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, let, Let me start with this. I have to believe that you're delighted to hear the names Terrence Shannon and Coleman Hawkins here. I mean, you know, the fact that you have two legitimate superstars back on this team when they easily could have gone to the next level. Tell me about kind of what that means for this group this year. Yeah, you know, and you're I'm I'm happy to have them sitting here. There's no doubt. We've got two guys that uh, uh, I think in their own right have or two of the better players in the country, not just the league and and to uh, know that they went through their process. Uh, they did their due diligence and felt like that uh, uh, coming back was in their best interest. Uh, can really kind of springboard both of them, I think, off the seasons they had last year where they but they both grew. Terrence's case, uh, he was new to our program. Coleman's now a, an old hat. He's in his fourth season with us. Uh, so they can really blossom and, and, and really now put themselves in leadership roles. So uh, I'm really excited about that. Tell me about the feedback that each one of you got as you went through the process and, and what ultimately swayed you to return. Terrence, why don't we start with you? Uh, the feedback, I got I got good feedback. Uh, <clears throat> most most of the feedback I got was uh, just making decisions with my right hand uh, and improving my outside jumper more. Um, and that's, that's something that just comes with working, and that's something that we do at Illinois, and I was okay with that. So I felt real comfortable with coming back um, and putting myself in a better position. How about you, Coleman? Yeah, I was getting some great feedback as well. Uh, you know, things like, uh, you know, teams want to see me shoot the ball more. Um, you know, I, I'm a little passive at times. You know, they they, they question uh, whether or not, you know, if I'm being passive or, you know, not necessarily afraid to shoot the ball, but, you know, not willing to shoot the ball. So I think that's a big thing for me is just improving my three-point percentage. And then there's just also just a lot of things that go into it that people don't necessarily think about, you know, what type of contracts, you know, your living situation. So I thought it was best for me to come back to Illinois, you know, great housing, um, great program. You know, I'm familiar with everything. Uh, so I think it's just kind of a much mature decision for me to come back to school. To what extent did you guys talk to one another about your decisions? We didn't uh, really talk. We didn't, yeah. we didn't really talk. Uh, the, the, on the day of the deadline, Coleman, he asked me, uh, was I coming back? And I didn't know at the time, so I didn't really say anything. So but we ended up like making a decision around the same time. Yeah, for sure. We kind of just let each other just handle you know our right. situations yeah. differently you know we're in different situations yeah. so yeah uh tell me about the trip to spain this summer like how did that help this team evolve and and what did you learn about about your group yeah it was a great trip first of all um i think it was more ab- about the 10 practices then the team bonding that went th- went with that and you can do that in a little bit of a relaxed atmosphere uh, we've got a good group of, of, of returners back. And then you throw in the new guys. And we've, we brought grad transfers in. We have three freshmen who, who joined us as well. But uh, we played even minutes for the most part. Um, and, and all we tried to do was uh, develop a little chemistry. Marcus Dumas didn't get a play in that, in the, in that due to an injury. But uh, it gave us an opportunity just to kind of blend.
blend uh, for these guys to get to know each other in different ways on the court and off. Uh, just a fantastic trip. We had a lot of fun and, and uh, uh, really a positive, positive trip for us. We were talking a little bit at the outset of our show, guys, just with the, the analysts on the desk about how the world has changed here in college athletics because you do have so many new faces and chemistry becomes such an important part of how do you create chemistry quickly, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, you need to do that. It, it, it's different. It's an accelerated process than where it used to be. How did that trip to Spain help you guys in terms of meeting some of these new guys, the, the transfers, the freshmen, and integrating them into your group? Uh, I, f I feel like Coach Brad, he got to see what everyone was capable of on, on the court, uh, just going against different opponents. And after that, uh, we got a good evaluation of, I think, everyone getting their roles on the team and and what they needed to work on and what they could be better at and what they were really good at. Um, but I think just going off that, uh, we got a lot um, of what we needed to know from Spain and we continue to uh, go from there and get better. How important is kind of the off the court stuff, Coleman, to developing that? In other words, just hanging out together, spending time together, getting to know one another on a different level. Can that help you on the court? Yeah, I think it definitely can help, um, you know, but I think the biggest thing is understanding our common goal and, um, you know, everyone's all on the same page. And that was kind of like a day one thing, what we what we determined as a group, what our common goal was. And, you know, I talked to Marcus during the, the draft process and, um, you know, just getting feedback from him. And, he, he, you know, he mentioned to me, what he wanted to do was win. You know, Quincy wants to win. Justin wants to win. And they've all been a part of their own success. But, you know, when it comes to, you know, off the court things, everybody has their own thing that they do. Um, but it's still important to, you know, take part in, and kind of hang out and get a feel for everybody. But I think it's pretty easy when you have one common goal, and that is to win. So, Outside shooting was a bit of an issue with this team last year. How do you feel like you've addressed that this year? Well, I hope better shots. OK, yeah. um, how much of it was shot selection versus how much of it was yeah, just shots not falling? Yeah, Dave, I, I think one of the things that 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 we've talked a lot about, we 42 percent of our shots last year were threes. Okay. Um, and, and we probably took as many contested threes early in the shot clock as any team in the country. And um, that that's not a knock on anybody. That was that was me not getting a, or us to execute at a high level. We had guys who could make them. Uh, but we've got to find a better balance. Uh, you know, we saw late in the year Coleman's effectiveness in the post. We've, we've, we have Dane Deja had, had moments where he was dominant in the post. We've got to find that balance. We've got guys who can really drive it, uh, Terrence being one of those guys, and uh, the guys we've added. Uh, are we a better shooting team? Yes, absolutely. Getting Luke Goody back, uh, a career 40-plus percent three-point shooter. Marcus DeMosk, a very, very good shooter. Quincy Gurrier made 55 last year at Oregon. Uh, Justin Harmon's a, a high 30% three-point shooter. So, uh, let alone Draven Gibbs, uh, Lawhorn, a, a freshman for us. So, we've addressed it, but it's I think it's, it's more about the shots and the shot selection we take and getting the right guy shooting them. All right. Looking forward to seeing how it all comes together for the Illini. Thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate Thank your you. time. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. A uh, fabulous year for Northwestern. Saw both Boo Booey and Brooks Barnheiser, as well as Coach Chris Collins in that little montage there. Before we look ahead to this year, when you processed last year, what was the, the best memory for each one of you? Uh, you know, the best memory for me was definitely probably that Purdue game. You know, just seeing every, uh, all the fans come out and support and then, you know, be able to rush the court and, and celebrate that, that win with us for sure. Brooks. I think, yeah, I think for me, it had to have been a tournament. You know, you dream about getting there, uh, getting there with that group. It was unbelievable, and uh, that was definitely my favorite moment, dream come true. Chris. Yeah, obviously the atmosphere is in Welsh Ryan. You yeah. know, it was something we had hoped when we built that arena, that we would get that level of support and to see the students come out. But I would say with Brooke, to be able to experience Selection Sunday with these guys, you know, you had guys that had been through the journey of four years that had to start kind of from the bottom and work their way up. So to be able to experience that and, and go play in the postseason was really special. Tell me a little bit about how you build on that. I know, you know, la the last time you guys made the tournament, the next year wasn't great. And there were a lot of extenuating circumstances, not the least of which was where you had to play that season. It certainly wasn't the atmosphere that you guys had in Welsh Ryan last year. But that being said, it just felt like the chemistry was never quite there with that group. So how do you appreciate what happened last year 
but not allow that kind of backslide and, and say, hey, we got to build. Yeah, well, hopefully I'll coach them a little bit better, you know, than I did that last team. And I didn't think I did a great job, you know, after a great year kind of coming back. Right. Some of the things that I could have done, you always look within yourself. How yep. could I have helped? Uh, I think being six years older and more wiser and, and, and being in more games and all those things, hopefully I can help lead these guys. But we have a new group. I think that's been exciting. Uh, we do have six guys returning from last year's team, but we have six new players. Yeah. So I think when you enter great new personalities and kind of new guys developing roles I think our guys understand it's a whole new team and even though we have four kind of starters back uh, we still are very new we're, we're fi figuring each other out we got some new pieces and I think the guys are excited like it's a new year these guys know I don't talk about last year I told them I'm not going to this is a new right. journey a new pursuit and, and that's how we're going to approach it. One of the things that was really interesting as last year went along was that you guys developed a clear identity and that identity was on the defensive end of the court. And I'm not sure others from the outside saw that coming. How do you carry that forward, Brooks? How do you keep that that toughness and that mentality, particularly given that, that Chase Audige, who, who really was on that end of the court, and was Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year, that he's not here anymore? Yeah, I think it's just trusting our coaches, you know, and uh, getting back to our principles. And, you know, it's kind of like a next guy up mentality. You know, Chase was a great player. You know, we're going to miss him. Um, but now there's a new opportunity for other people to come in and, you know, be physical, you know, buy into our defense. And, you know, hopefully we can just, you know, be the same defensive team, if not better, because, you know, we have another year doing the same uh, kind of things, listening to Coach CeeLo and Coach Collins and our, all of our assistants. I think we just got to listen uh, to what they want us to do, buy in completely, and, you know, uh, the sky's the limit in that case. The challenges were really on the offense offensive end, Boo, and this team didn't always shoot the ball great. Like, how have you seen that come around here in the preseason, and, and maybe who are some of the new pieces that could help you there? Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, we definitely struggled offensively last year, but, you know, I think adding uh, Ryan Langborg and, you know, Justin Mullins and uh, Blake Preston, you know, we can uh, really add uh, – some more athleticism, you know, in transition, running down the floor. And Ryan Langborg, he can really uh, bring the shooting to the table. And, you know, he can make plays for other guys. He's another older guy who just knows what he's doing. And, you know, I think so far, just in this preseason, we've been uh, really shooting and moving it well, playing really well connected. And, and the offense has been flowing really well. So, Who, how, much, how much pressure do you feel? I mean, you are a preseason All-American. I mean, there are some five-man preseason All-American teams that you are on. Right. So, I mean, we are talking about not just, well, he's fifth team or whatever. Like, no, first team. Right. I mean, to, to be thought of at that level versus kind of the, the journey that you've taken through your career, like how much pressure do you feel to, to be mentioned in that way? I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't really feel any pressure. You know, I, I kind of just, you know, like Brooks said earlier, you know, just trusting the coaches and trusting my teammates and, you know, make sure that I'm here every day for them and just trying to stay uh, present in the moment and just work on my gra and work on my craft to continue to get better every day. Brooks, I think back to being here a year ago and Boo was here with Chase and, and Coach Collins and I said to them, tell me a player who's made a big <laughs> jump and they all said, oh, Brooks Barnheiser's going to have a really good year. And you did. And, and you particularly did down the stretch. I mean, it, it really felt like you just hit another gear. What happened there? Like, how did it all click for you? I think it started, um, it was actually before a uh, Big Ten play. I remember Coach uh, kind of came up to me and was saying that, um, you know, we believe in you and you just got to start playing with confidence and being yourself. And because, uh, you know, if you're yourself, everybody else is going to benefit from it. So I, I remember UIC game, I had a pretty good game. And I, that was the first time I saw, like, okay, I can I can come out here and be a good player. You know, just witnessing that, you know, firsthand meant everything for me. And then, you know, once uh, I finally got more comfortable and comfortable and then Big Ten play hit and, you know, uh, teams as game plans were like, okay, I'm going to try to take away Boone Chase. Um, so somebody had to step up and try to take pressure off those guys. And that's just all I was trying to do. And that's what my team needed me to do. So uh, coach gave me that confidence, and I just went out there and played my game. So since you two were soothsayers last year, right, <laughs> you predicted the emergence of Brooks Barnheiser, I'm going to ask all three of you, I suppose, the same question. Who can take a big step this year? Actually, I think it's a guy who's been a key guy for us. I, I think Ty Berry. 
you know, I, I think Ty last year kind of quietly played a big role for us, but didn't shoot the ball great. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's something we know he does at a really high level. But his emergence as a defender, as a playmaker, as a rebounder, energy guy for us, I, I see him getting back to that level. We know he can be as a shooter. And, you know, I think he's going to be – a lot of people are talking about Boo and talking about Brooks, you know, and, and obviously Ryan coming in is going to have a big role. But I think Ty is equally important, especially as a guy who's a senior and has played in a lot of games. You guys have a, a candidate for that this year, the emerging star? Yeah, I, w I would agree with Coach. You know, I, I would say Ty Berry, you know, because last year I know he didn't shoot it as well as he would have liked to. But, you know, th this this uh, offseason and leading into our preseason work, you know, he's really been playing really well. So I'm excited to see what year he's going to have. I want to ask you one last question. You talked a little bit about it both uh, when you were at the podium and, and here at the very beginning of our session. But the student support, I mean, it was crazy last year. I did that Purdue game. I mean, you know, people were like hanging from the rafters. <laughs> They've had to completely change the way they're allocating tickets for the game this uh -huh. year because the, de the demand is so high. The students literally now have to earn points to get themselves tickets for your games. What does that support mean? I mean, it means everything. I mean, I think it's just a testament to where our program's going. And, you know, I, I just, you know, I love that our fans buy in like that. It means everything to us, you know. Going out there with a home court advantage and everybody's so into it, it means the world. I mean, I know how these two feel. It's the same way. But it was just so cool to see that for our whole program and for our school. All right, well, congratulations. Had a fabulous year last year. Looking forward to seeing what's next for the Wildcats this year. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Sets the screen. He rolls. Here's the lob to him. Good look at the Michigan State Spartans as we welcome you back to Big Ten Media Day. Joined by their head coach, Tom Izzo, along with A.J. Hogard and Tyson Walker. Fellas, you watch highlights like that of, of last season. There were certainly a lot of real highs for Michigan State. What goes through your mind as, as you try to process last year, both the, the good moments and the not quite as good? Uh, just definitely uh, being more consistent this year. You know, we had some stretches where we, we lost a couple games in a row. Uh, just trying to stay consistent with it, uh, stick together more, uh, and just uh, put more games together, full games. AJ, what about for you? Uh, I think consistency is definitely the key, you know, um, being consistent in everything we do, especially with the way the Big Ten is set up. We know top to bottom every game is going to be a good game. So just bring it in every night and – just leading it and learning from the things that we didn't do last year consistent-wise. Coach, I don't want to skip too far ahead, but I think you're the ultimate person to ask this as someone who has had incredible success in the postseason. You guys were the only team in the Big Ten last year that exceeded its seed expectation in the NCAA tournament. In other words, won more games than you were supposed to based on seed. You've had incredible success in the postseason. In this league for a long time, like I think there's a misconception, well, the Big Ten doesn't do well in the tournament. Now, the Big Ten was getting teams to the Final Four, getting teams to the championship game every year, and just for whatever reason, wouldn't win that championship game. But these last few years, it hasn't gone great. So can you put a finger on kind of what it is and why there hasn't been the same kind of postseason success just these last few years that there was previously? Well, I wish I could have. The eight we've been in, I think four of them have had two Big Ten teams in the final right. four, you know? I mean, we had Wisconsin and we Ohio State and Michigan's been in there. And uh, you know, I think these guys said it best, and that's what I'm so excited about. You know, everybody could leave. I mean, that's the way it is nowadays. Yeah. And these guys stayed, and they've been through failure, and they've been through some success. I mean, we've had some serious successes, and yet maybe that Kansas State game was one of the best games of the tournament. It was fabulous. But we've yeah. had some failures. And I think, you know, you look at what Matt went through at, uh, at Purdue. Uh, we got beat by Middle Tennessee back with Valentine. I thought that was one of my best teams. Sometimes it's just the luck of the draw. If we keep knocking on the door, maybe one way would be let's get to be a higher seed this year and we don't have to over have more success. Let us be better on the front end and then maybe we can continue on through. You know, AJ, it's, it's interesting. I, when you kind of look at rosters each year and I always kind of think about the journey of each one of the players, right? And kind of where do they come from? Are they a, a, a player who's a four year player? Or are they someone who transferred in and kind of what have been the, the ups and downs? You were a guy who has really persevered, right? I mean, you have stuck around and in a day and age where it is really easy. And I don't say this in a judgmental sort of way, but it is really easy to say, you know what? I'm going to go see maybe the grass is greener somewhere else. 
What has led you to stick around with this guy, with this program, and get to the point where you are now where you're considered one of the better players in the league? And don't say stupidity. (laughs) (laughs) You know, just every day learning from the guy sitting next to me, um, it's wonderful. We had our ups and downs, but just being able to know that he trusts me um, and I trust him and just growing together. The growing process that we've been through has been fun. Um, It had its ups and downs. It wasn't always good. But it's definitely been fun, and and this year, my senior year, is just the next step that I want to take and, you know, just help him get back to where he wants to be and get to where I want to be. So it works hand-to-hand. Tyson, what about your decision to come back? Uh, I think my decision was pretty easy. Uh, You know, after we lost to Kansas State, I'm like, yeah, I'm coming back. I probably told the whole team, just didn't tell Coach yet. You didn't tell me. Yeah. (laughs) Well, you're always the last to know, right? (laughs) (laughs) That's fitting. Uh, Anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I just just wanted to uh, do more. I feel like – I want to be remembered a little more. I uh, feel like I haven't done enough. And I got some personal things I want to do and uh, team goals I want to do for sure. And, you know, if, if everything goes as planned, you know, maybe if we win a national championship, maybe my jersey could be in the rafters, you know. Right. So stuff like that. You know, looking at your roster, Coach, you're old. I don't mean you personally, although you are as well. But um, the, 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 the team is old. And, and you think about some of the teams that were really successful last year in the NCAA tournament, right? We saw a lot of teams get to the Final Four with older rosters. And I feel like this has been cyclical through the years. We did go through. Jay Wright was a master. Yeah, absolutely. But we did go through some periods where it's like, okay, you can make the Final Four with a bunch of freshmen. And, it, you know, here and there. It, it, it felt a lot less so last year, right? Like FAU was a great yeah, example, yeah. right, of, of guys who just stuck around and got yeah, better together. Yeah. So how does that help you? How does the familiarity well, with one another? Well, right? let me say this, yeah. because AJ's right, you know. I mean, we go through our differences. I did it with Mateen Cleaves way back when right. we started this whole thing. And I think what's what's happened is I do trust them, and I think they do trust me. Sometimes it takes a little longer, you know. Sometimes it's my fault. You know, we've all been through a lot with COVID, I mean, we, all, we, we didn't have the same relationships. We didn't even get to see each other as yeah. often, you know. And, you know, Tyson transferred in from a smaller school, and he's he's been excited. Be He gave a speech after the Duke loss that was one of my all-time favorites. I use it myself when I'm— What did he say? Well, he just thanked the team. He never thought he'd have a chance to play— in a game like this with this kind of fanfare and everything it was tear jerking if you want wow. the truth i don't do him justice what he said aj you're right i mean me and him d- have our differences because you have to with your point guard he's your quarterback you know and yet uh i'm not easy to play for either i understand it's it's both ways but i think what we both understand he's got a goal he's got a goal so do my other two guys where they want to get personally we have goals where we want to get as a team And I think this summer, they've done a phenomenal job of bringing our young guys. We got some talented young guys. I want to ask you about those guys. We got like a minute left. Yeah. So, so tell me about the young guys because you have one of the best recruiting classes in the country. Yeah, and they're all good players, and they're all gonna. He used the word. I love you for that. He lives used the word process. You know, they have to understand that too. I mean, Booker hell of a talent and he's really going to be a good player but he's still skinny and he's got to work on that you know he's done a great job jeremy fears has has been great i mean he really does a lot of things he goes at him every day that's going to do nothing but help him we got a kid cohen carr that we're all envious of because he jumps better than even you dave and uh he, he really can get up and garrig is a is a kid like a matt mcquade who's coming along but these guys are the rock you know they've been through it those guys got talent these guys got talent those guys got just talent right now these guys got talent and experience and that experience he knows what it's like if we miss a free throw late we don't cut out right he's lived it you know so has ty and and uh, i'm lucky they've been great you're right they all could have left but there's times i could have left too yeah and you know what we all stayed and um, we're staying for something special. Whether that'll happen, we're going to find out. Well, looking forward to seeing the byproduct of that perseverance here coming up this year. Fellas, thanks a lot for your time. Best of luck. Can't wait to see the Spartans on the court. Rutgers Scarlet Knights making the trip from New Jersey here to Minneapolis, ready for Big Ten Media Day. They cleaned up pretty well, right? Traveled in the sweatsuits, but look at these guys now. 
Cliff Amore, Moat Mag, Steve Pye. I was talking more about them than you. Yeah. <laughs> you were, you were <laughs> well, thanks. As they well, welcome, do. fellas. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, let's talk a little bit about last year first. And and I felt like, and we, we certainly pounded the table, like you guys deserve to be in the NCAA tournament. You're one of the last teams that was left out. To what extent, I can start with you, Cliff, and just head down the line. To what extent do you use that as motivation? What happened at the end of last uh, year? We use that as motivation every time, just like taking the like the little game serious. Like last year, we lost a couple of games by like one point. If we like stay locked in and win those games, I know for sure we would made it in the NCAA tournament. So this year, as a motivation, we got to win every game we can, and we're doing that. Moat. Oh yeah, just pick it back what Cliff said. I feel like we just you know just use this fuel, you know, and just you know just bounce back. I feel like everything happens for a reason. I feel like we have you know a great group, a group of guys, you know, headed uh, headed what young guys, older guys, and I feel like we have everything we need to be successful this year and make it back to the tournament. You took these guys on a foreign trip. You went to Portugal and mm-hmm. Senegal, which I, I really want to hear a lot about that <laughs> in particular because there was some amazing social media content that came out of that. It looked like you guys really made a, a huge yes, impact there in, in a lot of different ways. But how does that allow you to turn the page, like traveling abroad with one another? And, and I mean, every year brings unique challenges. We started with that trip, four needles. So we had to get the four needles and the malaria pill. So obstacles <laughs> right off the bat right, you know, right. before you can travel there. But, you know, to get these guys all together, I'm thankful to have these guys back. I mean, Cliff, obviously, is an elite big guy in the league. But Mawat Mag, maybe one of the best defenders in the country. And Andre Hyatt, who's also here, is going to have an unbelievable season. So we started that with that tour, played really good basketball, but did a lot of fun stuff, too, and learned a lot about, you know, the African culture and got to do some unique things. So it was a great trip for us, and hopefully that catapults us into the season, too. Yeah, tell me a little bit about that trip, particularly the time in Senegal. I mean, I, I saw social media content of you guys with young people kind of giving clinics and helping them learn the game, and, and particularly given each one of your backgrounds, like what, what did that mean to you to, to be able to do that? It meant a lot, you know, and definitely going there, it's, it's definitely different compared to America, you know, just seeing how people are living, you know, they just seem happy and everything, and I, I get some of the guys the first time, you know, move, um, leaving the country, so I feel like just seeing the foods, different cultures, and like how the way they do things was, you know, eye-opener, and like I, we, all, we all have fun and, well, you know, experience we want to get. Cliff? Uh, for me, I think it's a, like a great like bonding experience for my teammate and also for my coaches. They get to experience like Africa, like seeing the difference between Africa and America. And also a coach get to see how they use the little stuff to like make fun of like we went to the beach, they was like using stones to do push up and yeah we got a gym, a whole gym and they was like happy with it. Right. They was happy just working out in the gym and also the food and the culture we get to experience a lot. And for me, just being back home in Africa, right? Yeah, it was a great experience. Yeah, I mean, your story is amazing. You guys both have amazing stories. But I mean, you moved to the U.S. from Nigeria at age 14, yes. had never played basketball. <laughs> when you think about like kind of going back, and obviously it's different going to Senegal from going to Nigeria. I mean, I understand they're two different countries, but they're on the same continent, right? Yeah, so you're kind maybe of like 12 met- hours. Yeah, so you're metaphorically going home, even if you're not going back to your home country. Like, what did that mean to you to think about like how far basketball had taken you that you came back in almost this ambassadorial role? I take me to like just seeing what I used to be like when I was back home, just like walking, playing soccer. Like when we back uh, when we went there, it was like actually playing soccer. Right. I was. I, did, I wanted to join them, but just see it. Now I play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an ambassador, so it's just like, it felt great. Just like we presented workers and going there to help them out. Mawat, you have an amazing story too. Your family left the Sudan when you were very young. Yeah. You were in a couple of different places, Australia, ultimately made your way to California, and, and now at Rutgers. When you reflect on your journey and kind of everything you've been through, what do you think about? You know, it's been, definitely been a long journey, you know. So, you know, me and my, my family and I left um, Sudan for the Civil War when I was two. So I, I don't really remember much. Right. So we uh, immigrated over to um, Australia. So I was there until I was 15. Then I moved over to um, to Florida for two years, then to California for another two years, then Jersey for four years. Right. So it's definitely been a Jersey, but I'm embracing it. I'm learning. You know, I'm growing as a person. And, like, yeah, it's one I won't forget. And, you know, yeah, you, that's it. I think we were all devastated last year when you got hurt, 
partly just because you hate to see a player get hurt, but also yeah. just knowing everything that, that you had been through. Yeah. Tell us where you are physically and, and, and how maybe you've processed that and, and grown from it. Yeah, so getting hurt, you know, it's very unfortunate, but I feel like, you know, everything happens for a reason and these obstacles you got to fight through, as Coach Pike says. And I'm doing well, you know, I've, I've been rehabbing ever since that day. Um, going into my eighth month, I'm getting strong with the guys. I'm on the court right now doing things. Hopefully I could be out there soon. And yeah, just taking it day by day and I'm good spirits. That's great to hear. Everyone is, is absolutely rooting for you and seeing you get back out there at 100%. Yes, sir. Let's talk a little bit more about this roster. You did lose your backcourt, but I know you are really excited about what you've got. And I, I'll tell you, we had one of those conversations where you're just kind of throwing around names and who could emerge this mm -hmm. year with, with our analysts on the desk. And Derek Simpson was a name that was mentioned by a couple different people. Mm -hmm. So let's start there and then just kind of give us a sense of what you've got in the backcourt. You know, really excited. And these guys will tell you we're a little different in the backcourt, very athletic. And um, it starts with Derek. I mean, he's uh, a guy that we think has improved a tremendous amount. Freshman year is always a challenging year. And these guys will tell you their freshman year, they learned a lot. He certainly is taking that jump and, and needs to. And we got Noah Fernandez, too. He was the leading scorer at UMass. He's unique. He shoots it. He's really crafty. He's a little bit older with a lot of experience. And then Jamichael Davis is a freshman that these guys will tell you, um, athletic, quick and fast and tough. And then we have Gavin Griffith, too, in our, in our backcourt. And he's the highest ranked kid, you know, that we've had in a while. And he shoots the ball at an elite level. And he's a really good athlete. So excited. Austin Williams, another grad transfer that just got on the court a couple about a month ago. And he's healing from an injury. But he's he gives us a different dynamic, too. So we're fast, we're athletic, right. and, and, and we're different. So, I, yes, I hear you saying fast and athletic a lot here. Uh, <laughs> can we expect the pace to be pushed perhaps a little bit this year? I mean, what should we expect in terms of getting up and down the court, Boat? Yeah, definitely the pace, you know, being pushed and everything. And I feel like we have, you know, as I said, as Coach said too, all the, keys, all the key pieces we need, and I feel like everybody's able to shoot the ball. So the spacing is going to be wide open for lanes, and I feel like uh, we're very athletic, so we can go downhill and finish over defenders. And I feel like, um, yeah, it was gonna, the pace is going to be pushed and it's going to be a, a year to remember. The run in Knights? <laughs> we better be the defending Knights. <laughs> These guys yeah. know that, bro. Right. We're running a lot faster yeah. nowadays. We don't want to get carried yeah. away. Right? Let's remember what got us here. Yeah, that's Dude, right. Spoken yeah, like right. a true coach. All right, fellas, that's really right. appreciate you taking the time out to visit. Looking forward to seeing you this year. Thanks, Thanks so you. much. Thank you. We are back in... We got a couple of the preseason all-conference picks. Maryland, one of just two teams with two players on that preseason all-conference team. Jameer Young, a unanimous pick, and Julian Reese on it as well. Joined by those two and their coach, Kevin Willard. I, you were all-conference last year, so this is old hat for you, right? But, but for you to be mentioned in those top ten players in the league, what, what does that mean? Yeah, it means a lot, you know, um, just can't let it get to our head and, you know, it's preseason. It doesn't mean it doesn't really mean anything, but it's, it's great to know, like get the notoriety that I feel like I deserve and just just build on that and just use that as a as, as motivation. I am joking somewhat uh, with you because I do think you came into last year and the question was, hey, this guy's an elite player, but he played at a lower level. Is it, is this game going to translate to the Big Ten? I think it's safe to say it translated. Like, can we all agree I yeah. think so. on that? Uh, <laughs> Did you go in kind of feeling like you had something to prove? Yeah, definitely. Uh, just coming in, you know, just making the jump, um, you know, just new system, um, higher level of play. So really coming in trying to uh, make sure I, I show people that I belong. Um, just really use it as motivation, just coming in. Coach, this was an outstanding team a year ago. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, I never know what internal expectations are, right? Everyone expects that, ah, we're going to be good, we're going to – win whatever it is but I think based on external expectations you probably exceeded them somewhat Get yeah I mean I you know what I was very lucky I mean Julian staying uh and getting Jameer early in the process kind right. of solidified what we were trying to do uh and then to be able to build around them um and then Dante Scott you know not enough people talk about what Dante did last year and, and the, yep. his career he's had so far um these guys gave a lot of hard work um, they came together as a team. They sacrificed a lot for each other. And we had a good year, and we're looking to build on that. What did you learn the first time through this league that you can apply to this year that maybe helps you a little bit? Go get some bigger guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I think this league, 
it, everyone talks about the physicality. And it's yeah. really, it's, it is a physical league, but it, it's more from a standpoint of depth. I mean, every team you play against is well coached. They have great players. And you have to have your A game every night. And I think that's the biggest thing that I learned. You guys were so tough to beat. I mean, you were literally impossible to beat at home in conference play, right? You went 10 and 0. What does that mean, that confidence of stepping onto your home court, Julian, and just knowing, hey, man, like, we've got this. we got the crowd behind us, and we haven't been beaten here. Yeah, it's a great feeling, you know. Um, you know, my freshman year wasn't really high attendance for home games and wasn't really a lot of people coming out. And, you know, it just means a lot winning in front of home, especially me being a native um, from Maryland, um, playing in front of my family, winning games, getting it done, and, and just achieving a lot of things. And it's just a great feeling overall. The flip side of that, Jameer, is how do you become a better road team? Like, what have you guys talked about in terms of going on into these hostile atmospheres and getting Ws? Yeah, really just how we um, handle adversity, um, make sure we stay connected as a team, uh, make sure we have a next play mentality, really, and really just trying to, you know, grind it out. You know, it's very tough on the road. So being able to stay connected is something that we emphasized. It seemed like, Julian, your game took a really big step last year. I feel like we went from talking about potential to talking about what was there, to talk about reality. Yeah. How do you make that jump in your head where, where you know, like you'll have flashes. You certainly had moments where it's like, oh, this guy's going to be really good. <laughs> yeah. But like where it gets to, gets to the point where consistently day in and day out, that's what you're showing. How, how does that happen for a player? You know, just taking my time, you know, staying, staying true to the grind, watching a lot of film. You know, I, I have to give a lot of props to Coach Grant, Bill Meyer from last year. Um, you know, just, just staying locked in with me and, and, and believing in me. And it just, I feel like it's all in the mind and just attacking things. I feel like I can, when I'm on the court and just attacking, I feel like I can do whatever. Kevin, where did you see the biggest growth in, in Julian? You know, I, I think him going through, uh, we, we had a stretch where we went Wisconsin, Michigan, Purdue, and I think him going through that stretch and playing really well, I saw his confidence start to grow. Yeah. And what most people don't understand about Julian is he's a, he's a phenomenal worker. He loves to get in the gym. He loves to try to improve his game. And I think going through that stretch, he said, hey, I, I need some more tricks in my bag. And he went into the gym and he worked on it. And he just kept getting better and better. And it wasn't because of anything special. It was him putting a lot of hard work in. Julian, I need to ask you a question that I don't know that I've ever asked any player up here. What was it like to see your sister turn into a national phenomenon last year? I mean, is that is that like a weird deal for you? I mean, clearly a great player, but like yeah. to see her become one of the most talked about athletes in the country. It was great, you know, um, especially seeing all the all the work she put on, put in behind the scenes and just seeing it all pay off. It's just a great feeling for me and my family. You know, you know, she's doing so well on and off the court, you know, especially taking advantage of everything and all the all her NIO and stuff like that. And I feel like it's just a great thing. Do you guys play one on one these days at all? Yeah, I haven't played her in a minute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Who won the last game you played? Probably me. I don't, I don't, it was a minute ago. Probably. All right. All yeah. right. Fair enough. Uh, speaking of buzz, there's a lot of buzz about Deshaun Harris Smith. So I'm going to ask his teammates first, and then I'm going to ask his coach. Tell us a little bit about him and what he brings to this program. Yeah, coming in, um, one of the best, you know, freshmen in the country. Um, very physically gifted, very competitive guy. So um, I feel like he's going to help us a lot. Um, he's going to help us right away. Uh, you know, he he's been around the block. It seems. He's very good off ball screens. He gets downhill very well. He's also a great passer, underrated passer. So I feel like he's going to help us a lot. Julian? Yeah, just just a dog on the court, you know, just brings it every every game, every practice. A high competitor, you know, coach coach has to tune it down a little bit, you know. We, <laughs> <laughs> More than a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we, we go at it in practice. Just, just a great teammate overall. Right. He, he sticks with us, and I just can't wait to play with him. Give us a little thumbnail on the other newcomers because he got a lot of promising Yeah, I mean, you know, players. Deshaun's obviously – Jamie Kaiser has really added – you know, we struggled shooting the basketball last year. Jamie brings toughness but also maybe one of the more pure shooters uh, that we've had. Jordan Geramo, uh, from transfer Indiana. from Indiana. Right. Uh, Jordan's given us, uh, I would say, some toughness and some athleticism that I think we, we really feel we needed. Um, so I think the guys that we've brought in have really complimented these guys. That was my goal. I didn't want to bring anybody in that was going to be a duplicate. So everyone we brought in, whether it was a freshman transfer, I think they really complimented the guys that's, that came back. And I think that's why I really like this team. 
Well, congrats on an outstanding first year in College Park. Really fun to watch you guys a year ago and, and anxious to see the Terps competing at the very top of the Big Ten Thank this you. year. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Yep. Ace Baldwin and Kanye Clary. Welcome, guys, and, and Coach Rhodes. Welcome to the Thank Big you. Ten. Great to have you. Well, we'll get to you in just a right, second. Right. I want to start with Kanye. Okay, it is very rare that you only have one person here who can put last year into perspective. But Kanye is that guy. It was an amazing run for you guys a season ago. So I just want to ask you, before we turn the page, before we move on to last year, bask in the glory that was last season. What's your best memory from last year? Uh, best memory, I would say, was just, you know, the mark we left last year at Penn State, uh, something that hasn't been done in a long time, made it to the second round of the tournament, as you just said. I mean, honestly, it just was a good feeling, you know, just winning, uh, coming up short in the Big Ten Championship. We want to, this year, we want to win it. So I'm just looking forward to doing that this year. So now you try to build on that, and, and you do it with a new head coach and almost an entirely new roster. Take us through, like, from when you got this job to the process of building this roster and getting this group together. Yeah, we, we knew what we were in store for with so many guys moving on, uh, but we, we had three guys to stay, Kanye leading the, the way with that, and then we went in and got really 10 guys in 59 days. Wow. Uh, but we got this guy to my left and Nick Kern that came with him, uh, uh, guys that knew how we wanted to do things and so forth. And we were just, you know, we tried to be very strategic and finding the right fits for us, for Penn State, that fit what we're trying to do. And thought we did a great job. I have a great staff. They're vets. They understand it. They have great relationships with a lot of people. And we try to take our time to get the right pieces so we can get this thing going. You mentioned your staff, and it's largely your group from VCU. Yes. How does that help in terms of when you have all these new faces, how does it help where you guys aren't learning one another? Yeah, it, the continuity and, and and the having each other, each other's back mentality is, has always been there, and it's a special group. These guys aren't just guys that I work with every day, but they're my best friends, they're my family, and that's a special thing. And uh, we went through all the ups and downs when you're on the coaching staff together. Uh, past seasons and uh, so we know what it takes uh, we know how to help each other move forward and build this program the right way and when you're in the foxhole with guys you've been in those foxholes with for a long time you, you know you, it gives you confidence and and uh, it, it gives you the, you know that security that you know you could go do this. Ace give us a sense of Coach Rhodes like what are we getting here style of play wise what are we getting here in terms of a, a, a coach and his style what should Big Ten fans expect? Uh, they should expect a uh, fast pace, a uh, fast tempo, 94 feet, aggressive on defense, and you just can't be soft playing with coach. And you have a mentality of winning. Okay, and how does that play out? Like, what? Give, give me, tell me about a practice. Like, how does how does he how does he <laughs> say you can't be soft? Like, in what ways does that manifest itself? Uh, just just whatever. Every drill, you just gotta go hard. Like, even if you mess up, like, just go hard, 100. percent How big a challenge is it? integrating all these new faces and, and Kanye I guess I can ask you as one of the guys who who's a holdover this isn't that uncommon really in in college basketball in this day and age maybe you guys are an extreme version of it just because of the unique circumstances but we have a lot of teams where it's eight new faces it's nine new faces right so w what's that process like of getting to know your teammates and figuring out how to play with one another uh, honestly it kind of uh, gave me the sense of like being a freshman all over again yeah in the terms of like relationships you got to learn everybody uh, know their tendencies how they want to play and like how they are at the court but I mean coach Rose and his staff and like you know ace Nick all the newcomers they have definitely made it very easy so, you know just to like we gel as a group very quickly especially uh going to the Bahamas uh just being around each other for that week uh it's been it's been very easy I would say how important was that trip tell me about that trip and, and kind of what you learned about your teammates on the court and off the court kind of you're smiling it uh, looks like it was a fun <laughs> trip <laughs> uh, uh, on the court, i would say we all like like you said uh, coach wants a winning mentality and yeah. he uh, appreciates that uh we we just want to go down there we got two wins uh and just off the court you know we enjoyed each other uh each, other, each other's time we spent time together we bonded ate food uh relaxed chilled on the beach and stuff just uh, you know getting to uh, know each other build relationships so uh, that was it, it was very good how, how do you build chemistry with your your teammates Ace? again you knew nick and so that helps, you you know, the coaching staff. But, like, how important is that time to say? Because you're going to have to go out there, right? And it's there are a lot of teams here that do have a lot of, mm -hmm. of veterans back, right, where 85% of their scoring is back. So how do you get yourselves to a point where you can compete on that plane right away? Uh, I'll just say we just, like, at the, like it's not even just on-court stuff that we do together. Like, off the court, we just we hang with each other. like And we just all, like, last, like, 
it's like the bond that we got. Like it's crazy how we just came together. Like it's just crazy. What? What? How do you think that happened? Like what? What was the impetus behind that? How do you? How do you bond that quickly? Uh, I'm not even sure, but I, we all got that. We got one goal. Like we all got the same goal, and that's just winning. Give us some insight into Ace's game. I mean, this is the Atlantic 10 Player of the Year, the Atlantic 10 Defensive Player of the Year. What, what, what should Big Ten fans expect well, here? Well, number one, he is a special competitive fire, and he and and it carries over to everybody on this team. So uh, this guy will want to beat you in a game of Uno, let alone on the court. Uh, <laughs> Are you a good Uno player? No, I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> See, he has a competitive edge that just yeah. carries over to everybody. But, you know, he, he – and like Kanye, they're two dynamic guards with the ball. They're quick. They're fast. They both want to guard. Um, you know, Ace has been in since he's been a little kid in Baltimore. He's been in basketball situations and championship situations, so he's not afraid of the moment. And I think that that helps you build a program, lay a great foundation, um, and he's going to lead the way. He and Kanye and Puff are going to lead the way by pulling this team together. And they've done a great job this offseason. New faces, new coaches, all that. But when you step on the court, it's still basketball. Yeah, it's interesting. You mentioned Puff Johnson. I had a chance to meet him yesterday in the hotel. I mean, we're talking about guys played an NCAA championship game yeah. and scored in double figures yes. in an NCAA championship game. You have Caduce Wahab who Big Ten fans certainly know from his time at, at Maryland, obviously played at Georgetown as well, but he has experience in the Big Ten. He has experienced, again, a guy who is a major contributor for good teams. How does that help you to have players who maybe haven't all played together, but who have been really successful where they've been? Well, experience is your greatest teacher. So those guys have experience and the experience on the biggest stage. Also helps, though, we have prior relationships. I recruited Puff's brother to Rice. We tried to recruit him to VCU. We, we, we recruited Q uh, out of the D.C. area. DeMarco Dunn, who played at Carolina, we recruited him at, when he was in high school. So when we were recruiting them, there was already prior relationships and some confidence in how we do things and, and the, know, the know-how. So they're just not showing up uh, and it's cold turkey. What's going to happen? Uh, there, there, there was prior relationships from our staff and I that that really helped build this uh, quickly here. Now you still got to do the job on the court, but these guys have experience and have been through battles, and they'll help me too. And I think that's important. Fascinated to see how it all fits together. Definitely looking forward to watching this style of play. Having having seen you at VCU, I know Big Ten fans are in for a really exciting style great. in State College. Should be great. Welcome to the Big Ten. Thank you so much. Welcome to the Big Ten. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> and we will see you guys down the road. Have a great year. Thank you. you. Thank you. All the Big Ten teams traveling in style as you see the Michigan Wolverines making their way to Big Ten Media Days here in Minneapolis coming off of a season which saw the Mesa Blue play in the NIT last year. Happy to have Sonny Washington here joining us. Uh, Coach Juwan Howard recovering from a medical procedure. We'll get to that in just a moment. Namari Burnett is here as well as Jace Howard. And, and so maybe we should start with you. Bring us up to date on your dad. How's he doing? He's doing well, man. He's recovering, um, getting his strength back day by day. And uh, we're excited to have him back soon. What are his marching orders to you guys as he, he sends you on your way and into practice? Uh, keep that same level of intensity that we would when he's here. And uh, our coaches have been doing a great job of uh, implementing that in our practices from Coach Phil, Coach Saadi, Coach H, along with the support staff of Jerron and Colin. And I think uh, us as players, we've just been doing a good job of um, keeping that same mojo that we would if he's here and uh, keeping that same level of focus because uh, when, when he comes back, we're going to be hitting the ground running, and uh, that's our plan. Saadi, tell me a little bit about the challenge for the coaching staff in terms of stepping up without Juwan here. Well, I don't know that there's really been a challenge. Um, you know, our staff has been together for five years now, uh, so we have great synergy uh, amongst our staff. Uh, and in that hallway, Coach Juwan has complete trust in us, and we're doing the job that he's hired us to do. Namari, this is a new team for you, so give us kind of the, the bird's eye view here. As I always think it's interesting, kind of the guys who, who come in who maybe don't have preconceptions, who don't know about what last year was or what last year wasn't, and just kind of take the team for what it is. So what is it? Like, give us a sense for what we should expect from Michigan basketball. For sure. Um, I think this team uh, has a sense of versatility and a sense of hunger that will – really push us over the edge this year. Um, we're going to come hungry the first game, first scrimmage, and um, we're already, already hungry in practices. And we're pushing each other to get better. Um, we're talking, we're communicating. This has probably been the 
the, the team most that I've all I've communicated with with each other as far as what we're doing on the court and how we can improve. So I think that will lead into the year and we'll have a strong year because of that. You were part of a really good team last year, a one seed in the NCAA tournament. What what can you bring from your experience at Alabama that you think can help this group? I can bring experience. I can bring um, a voice, a voice who's been there and, and done that and knows what it takes to win. Um, and especially on the defensive end and establishing that defensive identity that we will need and um, that we should have, that we will have, so that we can win a lot of games this year. It's interesting that you brought up defense, and I think we can agree the defense dropped off a little bit last year. It wasn't necessarily at the level that I think people had expected it to be at. How, how do you bring that back? How do you get it back to where Michigan is a team that's really difficult to score on? Well, I think it's the connectivity, uh, being disciplined uh, in our assignments. Uh, we actually were second in the league defensive efficiency. Uh, the challenge, I think, for us was just finishing those close games. Uh, we had we went four of 13 and games decided with six points or less. And uh, so now, fast forward to this year, uh, having young men like Namari and Jace uh, and the others uh, uh, will be in better position, I think, to uh, finish some of those close games. Jace, how do you see your role on this team in terms of leadership? Um, I see it as a big role. I feel like um, I've been here for a while now, so I'm starting to be one of those older guys right. on the team, which is crazy to think of. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's going to be implemented uh, throughout the whole team. But we have guys like Olivier, Namari, and Trey, like veteran guys that we brought in. We didn't bring in young guys. And having them as uh, their experiences, well, having them from their past experiences. Like, I mean, we had two top – two top 10 starters on different teams coming into our program and leading. They've seen and they've had their own experiences and it's been great. So just being able to connect that with us and uh, mesh that with our team, it's been great. And I think that's been seamless. And you would never know that they're just brand new players coming in. And, and I think that's uh, it's going to make us a very dangerous team. Coach, where's Jalen Llewellyn in his recovery? Man, Jalen is doing fantastic. He's had a great summer of rehab. Uh, he's been working his tail off. Uh, I can remember the first day when he uh, touched the court with our guys. Uh, I think they were as excited as he was. Uh, he's been practicing in a limited basis, uh, but he's also been doing a great job of just uh, getting stronger every day. And now we're at the point of just uh, waiting for the doctors to give him a full release. You never want to have an injury and you particularly feel so bad for a guy who came like you know to be in this leadership role and to be your point guard there sometimes does turn out to be a bit of a silver lining though and that is that Doug McDaniel maybe had his maturation accelerated a yeah. little bit and and really it at points played very well for you guys bring us up to date on him and kind of how you see his role evolving on this team absolutely Dougie was huge for us last year he stepped up into that role in a huge way for us uh, he's had a tremendous uh, off season uh, in the spring and summer and in so many different facets uh, academically physically uh, developmentally on the court uh, and it's been awesome to see him as a year two uh, guy using his voice more uh, leading uh, I think he's been great for a young player like George Washington uh, and so we're expecting big things of Doug moving forward you're sitting next to one of them but you got some some really good players in the portal you guys have mentioned Olivier Kamwa a little bit yeah. um, you know obviously Namari uh, give us a sense of some of these new players and the impact you see them having on the team here Jace well their impact is going to be huge uh, we didn't bring them here to just uh, and they didn't come here just to be like any regular players or any like right. not contribute and uh, when you start to realize that when you stepped on the court with them in late June or early July and they were just able to, you're just like, wow. Like, I see I see what the hype's about. And obviously, I've known Amari for a long time. But, like, to see it at this level and see what he can bring, it makes you excited. And um, it, it really makes us just more f tuned in and focused on what we're able to do for this season because now we have a clear look and uh, it just we're ready to go. Namari, what is this like for you? You grew up in Chicago. And so here you are. I mean, look, the 
Big Ten, as you know, is going to be even more national next year. It's a fairly national conference. It's a big uh, East Coast portion of it, too. Mm -hmm. But still, at its core, you're going to get to play a lot of games that are much closer to home than where you were playing at Alabama. So what does it mean to you kind of be back in this league, in in this area of the country, and, and maybe playing with and against some more familiar faces? No, first of all, it's a, it's a blessing to be able to play in front of family uh, close to home, and I'm excited to do that um, and do it uh, representing Michigan in the Block M and going to places like Northwestern, Illinois, that's close to home, and being able to see 20 to 30 <laughs> family members there rooting my name on, and they've already been texting me and calling me, <laughs> telling me how excited they are to watch. So it's going to be exciting. Um, I'm excited for the guys to meet some of the family as well, and um, just a big family. That's to, really what it is. To what extent did that influence your decision? Did you want to be kind of closer to home? Yes and no. Um, once I did make that decision, I'm like, and I'm close to home. So <laughs> nice. You know what right. I'm saying? On top. So um, it was just icing on the cake. And, um, you know, coming to Michigan was just about coming to Michigan. And that's what it really was at the end of the day. All right. Well, good luck, guys. Uh, certainly wishing Coach Howard the best. Pass that along. Thank you. To your dad. Yeah. And uh, look forward to seeing him back and look forward to seeing you guys out there on the court this year. Thank yes, you sir. very Go much. Go Blue. The Indiana Hoosiers, Xavier Johnson getting named to the preseason All-Big Ten second team after a season that was cut short by a foot injury a year ago. He joins us now along with Trey Galloway and head coach Mike Woodson. And Xavier, I want to start with you and, and your health. I mean, it was tough to watch last year. I know how badly you wanted to be out there. Give us a sense of where you are here in, in your return to play. Uh, in my return to play, I'm 100%. Uh, you know, going in and going into practice, you know, I'm an everyday guy. So I'm trying to be Coach, Coach Wilson wants me to be. So, you know, that's what I'm going to be. You guys are both team captains. Give me a sense of, of your leadership style. I can start with you, Trey, and then Xavier. Yeah, I mean, we've been here the longest with Coach Wilson. So we know what he wants us to do. Um, we have to do it every day in practice. And it starts with us um, being the captains. So I think just coming every day and coming to practice ready to go um, and, and show the younger guys what it takes to, to win the Big Ten. It's going to be huge. So I think every day got to come come ready. How do you set that tone, Xavier? Uh, you know, just being everyday guys, honestly, like I just said, uh, uh, you know, we got to be the most vocal on the, on the floor because uh, we, we honestly know what Coach Wilson wants. Uh, you know, we've been with him for, I've been with him for, it feels like 10 years. <laughs> oh, that's, not, <laughs> that's not right. <laughs> that's some suspect math yeah. there. Yeah. What's, what's he trying to say, Coach? He, he's called a lot of. <laughs> a lot of trash from Coach Woodson over the last two years. That's what that's about. What does it mean to have a, a point guard of his caliber back out there? No, it's huge because, you know, two years ago when I started this journey, we needed a point guard desperately. Right. And he he brought into what we wanted, you know, wanted at Indiana, and he came in, and he, he and Trace Jackson Davis, make no mistake about it, in that first year was the reason we got in the tournament play. Yep. And then last year, you know, we weren't expecting him to get hurt. He got hurt, and it was a major blow to our ball club. And we, we struggled for a minute, and then we had to regroup and realize that X wasn't coming back. Yeah. And we were able to get him back this season, which is big for the program. Mike, tell me a little bit about how the complexion of this team has changed. I mean, Trace Jackson Davis was a phenomenal player. You had Jalen hood Shafino, who's an NBA draft pick. You lose some other key leadership players, losing Miller Cop. I mean, there it's a very different roster than it was a season ago. Obviously, you have a couple of, of holdovers. But how do you kind of turn the page from those guys, and, and what's different? How is this team different than that group in terms well, of coaching them? We're going to have to let them go. You yeah. know, we have uh, ten new faces on this ball club, uh, four walk-ons and six, you know, two draft uh, draft well, recruit guys and four portal guys. So it's a lot of work that we got to put in. And a lot of these guys, they stuck around over the summer and gave us an early jump in terms of being able to coach. And now we've started a official practice last week so we can spend more time on the floor with these cats. But it's a lot of work, man, when you're talking about coaching 10 different uh, uh, faces on the floor and trying to put in a system that fits our style of play and how we want to play on both ends of the floor this year. So a lot of work. Uh, my staff and I are up many, many <laughs> hours trying to figure it out. And uh, the fact that we got these two guys coming back to help lead and 
and, and, and show some leadership in that regard is going to help us a lot, I think. You, you use the phrase, we got to let him go. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, again, we – we played a system where everybody knew where the basketball was going to go, and that was Trace Jackson Davis. Right. Even though we, we ran more pick and rolls than we posted the ball last season. But this season is kind of wide open because I got uh, athletic guys. I got a big 7-2 center, uh, and we're a lot rangier and longer. Uh, we'll probably shoot a little more threes this year. And we'll still post the ball because I feel like in college basketball, you can still get away with that posted as well as shoot three. So we're still a work in progress trying to figure it out and just going to take it a day at a time and see what happens. Well, there is some serious talent that has made its way to Bloomington. I mean, I know you guys are turning over a lot of players, but man, I mean, you look through some of the guys are bringing in and, and they can play. Who has stood out the most, you Trey? Like get, get fans excited about what some of these guys look like in practice. Yeah, I mean, like you said, well, we got a lot of new faces, and I'm impressed by everybody coming in because um, I mean, you, you want to get a chance to play with all of them, and we got a chance this summer to kind of get a, get a feel with everybody. But I'd say um, Khalil Ware, um, he's, he's a special talent. Um, and he's one guy that I've really tried to be on, be on a lot because I know how good he can be, and we all know how good he can be. So um, there's, there's a size and ability to shoot the ball and spread the court and be able to make plays on defensive end. It's going to be huge for us. So. We need him. We need him in the worst way possible um, to be ready. And I, I think if we keep, if we stay on him, he's, he's going he's gonna to be ready to go. So where transferring in? Tell me a little bit about Mbako, uh, one of the most highly touted recruits, not just in the Big Ten but in the country. What does he bring, Xavier? Uh, he's a guy that can that can make threes. Uh, honestly, it's some, it's area that we struggled in for the last two years. Uh, and he's a guy that, that you know coaches brought in, and that, that that'll change that. Uh, he's a great shooter. Uh, he's he's wired to score. Honestly. Xavier, I, one of the things that I'm always fascinated in is is kind of the backgrounds of players and how it translates. I think both of your backgrounds are, are really interesting. I want to start with yours. You come from a military family, both of your parents. How did that mentality, do you think, influence you and, and who you are as a person and maybe who you are as a player? Uh, I would say one thing one thing that they, uh, that my parents did did well was was, was sacrifice. Uh, they made a whole a whole lot of sacrifice for me and my family, me and my brothers and sisters. Uh, uh, one thing thing that they did did every day was work hard. Uh, you know, I seen them get up at four o'clock in the morning and go to work, uh, and they were dedicated to their to their craft. How about for you, Trey? You are the son of a coach, so first of all, I, like how much does he still coach you versus? The guy who does uh, officially in the official capacity coach you like what's the balancing act there and how do you think that that helped you both as a, as a person and a player yeah i mean it, it was just great um growing up and having him as a coach and being a part of my life and just really just our family just being so focused on basketball it was really special because you don't get that a lot but i think just now that i'm with coach Butch and um being such a, with such a great coach he kind of he's he kind of let that go um, and now it's, it's time for him to just be kind of a, a dad. Um, and I mean, there's t there's certain times where we talk about basketball and some things he thinks I can, I can work on and stuff like that. But most most of it's just kind of just being there for me um, and just be, being being a great dad. So it, it's been really cool to see to see the transition of that. It's interesting in recruiting circles. I think you were seen largely as a defensive player, or maybe that that was the the thing that you the the, the best thing that you brought in your game to the next level but we have seen you start to evolve mm. as an offensive player here what's the balancing act there for you in terms of becoming that that player while not losing sight of of kind of where your bread's buttered yeah I mean obviously one thing I really try to focus on is my defense and we to win games you gotta you gotta be able to play defense so I think just keeping that a big big focus in my game is, is huge but also just showing what I can do on the offensive end as well um, and keep expanding I know. I mean, there's there's a lot of things I can do, and I want I want to show that um, in this year. Um, I, I think Coach has put that trust in me to really to go out there and play my game. Um, so I think just being able to prove that um, this year is going to be big. Mike, what will determine how far this team goes this year? How quickly they can pick up things that we are putting in. Um, you know, I'm a big defensive guy. You know, and that's got to be first and foremost. I think. The last two years we won because we defended and rebounded the basketball, and that can never change. I think offensively we'll be a little bit different in that, you know, we got enough players now that we can spread the ball a little bit more and give guys an opportunity to do things. So um, 
Only time will tell, Dave. <laughs> I mean, we we got a lot of work, man. I'm telling you, we do. But I'm I'm happy where we are as I sit here today knowing that before we open up within a month, we got a lot of work still to do. Uh, well, I will keep you from that work no longer. I will let you guys go and, and tackle it, but very, very pleased to be able to visit with all of you. Best of luck sure. this year. Looking forward to watching the Hoosiers okay. in action. Thanks, Thank David. All right, sure. thanks, fellas. What a year it was for Purdue, the regular season champs in the Big Ten, the tournament champs in the Big Ten. Zach Eady, the consensus national player of the year, the preseason player of the year in the Big Ten as well. He joins us along with Mason Gillis and Coach Matt Painter. It was fabulous last year, and then you got to the NCAA tournament, and I know it just did not go the way you guys wanted it to. How do you process that as a team, like all of the great yeah. things that happened to you, and then the fact that some people are going to define you by the one really not right. so great thing? Well, that I think that's the the piece of it is that that's all you think about. You know, you should process it and, and feel good about you know, winning your league by three by games. By three games, by the yeah, way, yes. You know, winning your tournament, but when you return, you know, most of your team, and then now this is what, hopefully it's a silver lining, right? You know, hopefully you can do what Virginia did um, when they lost in the first round as a, as a number one seed to a 16. So um, we talked about it, we, we've discussed it, but now it's time for us to get to work and, and put ourselves back in that position and play better. So how do you move on from it, Mason? Day by day, listening to this guy, playing with my players, and you know, just being able to iron out things that we need to. Going back and watching film, picking up on new things, just learning the game continually, day by day. That's all it takes. The best part of it, I would say, is you really get a chance at a do-over, Zach. I mean, essentially, your entire team is back. I know there are a couple guys that aren't here. And, of course, you have some new pieces, which I know you guys are very excited about it and we'll talk about. But to have a chance to kind of right the wrong of, of the March part, not of all the rest of it, because the rest of it was great. But what does that mean to you? Uh, I mean, it's great. You know, we're in a position to do a, a lot of really great things next year. Uh, I think when you have a chance to kind of right your wrongs, something I you can't really, uh, you don't get a lot of opportunities like that in life in general. Um, and we have that opportunity in front of us, so it's a blessing. It's something that a lot of team, a lot of people on our team, are taking very, very, very seriously. Uh, we've worked in the gym. We've stayed long hours. We've got shot up, got shots up, and everyone's really worked hard this summer to try to uh, right that wrong. How does the familiarity of this group help you guys, Mason? I, we're, it's interesting, right, in this day and age of college basketball, you have some teams where they've got nine or ten new pieces. You have some teams where they bring the whole starting five back, right, and then a lot of them they are in between. But you guys, you know, essentially almost all of the key rotation players back. How does that help you become better? I would say the biggest thing is our camaraderie, playing with each other for now going on two years. It's basically the same team. We know, I know what Zach's going to do. I know where, where he wants to catch the ball. I know what Ethan's going to do. I know what Braden's going to do. And so having that understanding and that confidence in my team, I know that they have their back just like I have their back. And then also we understand our coach to a better level. Uh, players coming in to play for a coach for one year, it's hard to have a very good relationship with him. I've been here, I'm going on my fifth year, Zach's going on his fourth year. We have a lot of guys that have been in the program, know how we want to play, know how we're supposed to play. And at the end of the day, we're starting to figure out exactly what we need to do to win the games. Yes, we took that loss last year, but like Zach said, we have a chance to right our wrong. And so throughout this whole year, that's just what we're going to be doing. Zach, what made you decide to come back? I mean, you're National Player of the Year last year. You swept those awards. I think a lot of people would just say, what, what more does this guy have to prove? Why did you decide you wanted another year? Um, I mean, it's a, it's a tough decision at the end of the day. Um, I had a lot of time to decide in the summer. Um, I took my time, really tried to make my best decision. But at the end of the day, I kind of got on a call with my agent. I got on a call with my mom, and I said, uh, they basically asked me, like, what's, what's going to make you the happiest next year? Like, what of these decisions is really going to um, – you're gonna, what are you going to have the most fun doing next year? And that was a no-brainer. It's Purdue. I think the NBA, is a, it's obviously an honor to be in there. It would be an honor to play in there for a long time. Uh, but Purdue is a blessing to me. Purdue has been great to me. Purdue's, um, the campus loves me. The coaches love me. I've loved my teammates. And then we have a chance to really compete for every championship that there is out in the country. So I think when you have an opportunity like that, um, it's hard to pass up on something. Matt, how do you coach a guy who was the best player in the country? Like, how, how, do, you, how do you help him get better? Yeah. Well, you don't look at it that way. You know, you look at it from an improvement standpoint. Like he's improved every single year, 
and now he's got he's got to keep improving. But where he's at in his seventh year of organized basketball, like I was 12 in my seventh year of organized basketball. Right. So like he's he's got a lot of room here. He's not like leveled off. He can get better. So you know, just hold guys accountable. You know, whether it's him or you know a new a new player, just keep holding them accountable. Keep growing. See, last year at this time they said he couldn't block shots. He couldn't play in ball screen defense. He made the all defensive team, and he was great in both areas. Right. So a lot of times they'll they, they, they kind of set the narrative for you, the media, right? Oh, those those nasty, the, unbelievable. People. Yes, they're unbelievable. Terrible. They yeah. set the narrative for you, and, and they don't set your narrative. Like you know, you set your own narrative, and don't let somebody put a ceiling on it. Okay, so what's the narrative that you're trying to buck this year, Zach? I'm not trying to set any narrative. I'm just trying to win basketball games. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, okay, so Zach, I mean, you know, the progress obviously last year was, was amazing. Who else has made jumps, right? Like your your backcourt last year, there were times where it felt like these guys were were set to both be all conference players, and then I think there were moments where mm -hmm. being freshmen, you could right. see them like hitting the wall a little bit. So yeah. tell me like where they've made a jump and, and who yeah. else is well, taking big jumps. I think we have a lot of people that, that could be in that area. And I think it's gone on different nights. You're gonna have other guys, you know, jump in and play more of a role. Um, but I think it's gonna be different. Like, you know, our front line with Mason and, and with Caleb First and Trey Kaufman Wren, Will Berg to go along with Zach. I said, I think we have the best front line in the country. Um, we have two freshman guards last year that are now going to become sophomores, and that's where you make a really big jump because now you're you're not thinking as much. You know, you really know what's going on. You understand the system. You understand the defensive rules, and now you can go out there and play. But there's a lot of guys. I'm not going to reel off every guy on our yeah. roster, but there's a lot of guys that have improved and gotten better. But what we want to do is we want to collectively be better. You know, and, and grow our confidence. And I, I think the one thing that gets out there, we have a lot of guys that can shoot. But yet not a lot of guys get like high volume of shots and rightfully so. You know, Zach gets a lot of attention and he takes that in there. We, you know, us being able to consistently knock down shots, that creates so much space for everybody else. And now it creates space for him, it creates space for us, and it really puts the other team in a tough spot. Looking at your foreign tour and the results from that, it looked like Miles Colvin could help you address the outside shooting issue a little bit. Give us a sense for, for him and what you've seen. Yeah, he's a good player. You know, he's by himself in our practice. You know, you feel bad for him at times because he's the only freshman out there, you know, and he hears his name a lot, but we, everybody goes through it. Like nobody right. comes in, you know, into a program at, at any school and doesn't go through what he's going through right now. But yeah. he can make shots. He's very athletic, um, you know. And so once again, another guy that can space, you know, the defense out and, and give everybody more room to navigate. Guys, who else has, has jumped out at you in practice? Like who are the guys maybe that, that people aren't talking about in the Big Ten that they should be talking about? Zach, I'll let you go first and then Mason, interested in your thoughts. I mean, I think the first guy that kind of jumps to my mind when you say that is Trey Kaufman. Um, I think he's really, really improved this summer. He's really worked on his body. He's slimmed down. He's um, he's he's worked on his shot. Like he's he's had a very he's really worked hard. Like you'll go into the gym at random hours and Trey Kaufman will be in there. Like it's it's weird. Like you go in at five and he'll be there. You're going at nine. He'll be there. You're going at <laughs> ten in the morning. He'll be there. Like it's just like he just lives in there, and it's really, really shown in the kind of improvements that he's made this summer. Mason? Yeah, I would say the same. You know, he obviously eats, sleeps, and lives basketball. And I'm excited to see his future, really, including this year and his professional basketball career. He's going to be a great guy. He's a great guy now, and I'm excited to see it, along with everybody else on the team. Everybody's right. put in the work. That's that's the biggest thing and why I think we'll have the most success this year. Hey, show me those rings really quick. You just wear those casually <laughs> around? Is that? No, I had to remind myself. What yeah. we did last year. Okay. All right. Those are those we are get, pretty. We, so the you, goal is to one do is the regular again. season and one's the yes. Are, the goal are is to nice. do it again this year. Yeah. But you don't just you don't just wear those around in a normal no. day. special <laughs> occasions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fellas. Congratulations on a great year last year, and and looking forward to seeing what this year holds for the Boilers. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Thanks, guys. Yeah, man. We're gonna win a lot of basketball games. Come on. shocks people. Man. Make a lot of shots. Me. Listen. Play hard. Listen, man. Hustle, like hey. you said. You know, listen, we got some daggers and we got some hammers, man. Yeah, man. We got a little bit of both. We, we got a lot in the locker. Word. Then we'll hit you with whatever you need Word. to make you bleed. Word. Word. Go Big Red. Go Big Red. We're red for a reason. Big Ten, go Big Red. Big Ten, go Big Red. Big Ten, go Big Red. Let's do it. <laughs> 
Well, uh, that was more than we bargained for, frankly. I, I didn't know you guys were to come here and rap in addition to talk about basketball. That, t- tell yeah. us a little bit about how that came to be. Uh, you know, Joe, Josiah was just being Josiah. Um, He's going to always just, give you more than what you asked. Yeah, so I just joined in on him, joined in on the party a little bit in front of the camera. I got to say, Josiah looks like a little bit of a character. He is. That's uh, exactly what he is. More than a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> he, he is uh, his special character. Yeah, he's special. All right, well, he's, he's walking around. He's holding court yeah. here somewhere. Uh, great to have you guys with us. Rink Mast, C.J. Wilcher, and, and Fred Hoiberg. Uh, guys, I, I want to talk first, and obviously Rink can't speak with this, but C.J. and Fred, you can. I said this when you guys were coming up. You were the team that no one wanted to play at the end of last year. And it's kind of amazing to think about that because like I had you guys before you played Purdue, right? And it was January and you had had two huge injuries and it just felt like it wasn't going in, in a great direction. And for you guys to get to a point by the end of the year where you were one of the hottest teams in the Big Ten, like how did it happen and what did it tell you about your group? Well, I, I think, you know, I give our players all the credit in the world last year for building an unbelievable chemistry. Uh, the culture that they built allowed us to fight through that adversity that we faced in January. And we had really developed an identity of being a tough, physical, defensive-minded yeah. group that won a lot of games early, especially when we were healthy. We were at our starting group for 10 games last year. We were 7-3, and three, really should have been 8-2 and two, uh, after the tough call at home against Purdue. And then you lose two of the guys that really were the heart and soul of that defensive uh, uh, team that we had. And then we had to completely flip the way that we played. And we had a lot of guys that stepped up. Jamarcus Lawrence was huge. Uh, when we lost Bandamel, and then uh, Sam Hoiberg stepped in, had a great uh, end of the season, was on the court for a lot of big wins that we had at the end of the year. Uh, CJ had some big games for us at Rutgers, uh, where he had 24 points, hit four threes, and a big win at Iowa uh, towards the end of the year. But I think just the culture and chemistry that these guys built uh, was the thing that really allowed us to fight through the tough times that we experienced. And it gave us momentum going into the summer where we got a guy like Rink, where we got a guy like Josiah, uh, we got a, a Jerron Coleman, uh, we got a, a Bryce Williams, and uh, really got two, I think, impactful tr- uh, freshmen in Eli Rice and Matar Jop. So, you know, just to finish the season the way we did, uh, playing as well as we were, uh, you know, to fight through that adversity, I think really helped attract some really good pieces for us this year that are going to help us in a big way. CJ, internally, when all that stuff's going down that coach is talking about mm-hmm. and it just feels like man we did we built this identity with juan and emmanuel mm-hmm. and those guys get hurt like how do you how do you as players say hey we're not done fighting like what yeah. what gets that i think message out i think it's a testament to our coaches man um they they set the standard for us to meet every day and um i think it was just us being consistent in that and um trying to meet the standard every day. And we also had guys that, that weren't hurt, like Sam Griso and Derek Walker, who, um, and Sam Griso and Derek as well, they are guys who lead by example. And um, they were playing hard, so we followed suit. And I think um, it kind of just, I think it's a testament to uh, consistency and, and, and meeting the standard, and you know what I mean, and playing to our principles. Rink, what made Nebraska attractive to you when you went into the portal based on on kind of all the stuff the guys are talking about? Well, kind of what you pointed out, uh, how they like showed throughout February the promise that they have for the future. Uh, I really liked how they, they played. Uh, it really fitted with my play style. So just like the, that combination of like the promise that they showed together with how coach likes to run offense and how they how intense they are on defense, that really attracted me to come here. Tell us a little bit about your style. What can Big Ten fans mm-hmm. expect? Uh, I like to pass. I, I like to play at my uh, with my IQ, but I'm very physical too, and I stretch the floor as a as a more of a stretch five, stretch four type of player. So I bring a lot of versatility, um, kind of do everything. So I hope that I can uh, find a niche for myself in that. Well, Rink was talking about the way you like to play. One of the things that was so interesting last year is this team played, well, at the beginning of the year, you really, you know, slowed it down, were very physical. Then it felt like you sped it up again a little bit because you had to. Your identity historically has been playing fast and getting good shots really early in the shot clock. What's that identity going to be this year? 
Well, I think we're still trying to figure that out, Dave. Okay. Uh, we we are playing very fast right now. Okay. And you know we did a little bit of that early uh, in last year's season, and then we really kind of figured, all right, we got to slow down and really, uh, you know, every possession became more in the half court, and again, we really grinded things out on the defensive end. But you know, I think we have the personnel uh, with Rink, with Josiah specifically, guys that can really shoot the basketball. Uh, you know, we play a spread open style offense, and when you have a big that can stretch the floor in your trail spot, that's going to open up a lot of driving lanes for your playmakers uh, and also open up a lot of things. When you pull the opposing big away from the basket, uh, that opens up so many things for your offense. And when we've had that element in our offense, at whatever level I've been, I had a couple of them at Iowa State, uh, you know, had one in Chicago that could really stretch the floor. But when you add Rink, uh, you know, that does some of the things that Derek could do with passing the ball, Derek led us in assists uh, last year, uh, but you add a floor stretcher to that spot so that's going to open up things for a lot of our guys uh what case did at the end of last year you know with cj on the floor we had a very potent offensive group uh out there and we did play fast we had to play faster we had to mix in some zones just based on personnel so we really flipped the way we played and again i give these guys a lot of credit for changing the identity of a team midway through the season that's yeah. not easy to do no, dave it's amazing. Uh, but our guys bought into that and again really played well at the end of last year well one of the guys who played particularly well was case and we've gone a long time here with Without talking about him, uh, he was just phenomenal down the stretch. I know he had a great summer with Japan, getting them to play in the Olympics next year and, and was instrumental in that. I want you guys, though, to describe his level of celebrity in Lincoln. Like, <laughs> what's it like to walk around campus with Keisei Tominaga? Um, I wouldn't necessarily just say it's in on campus I, I it's everywhere in the country like i'll be in phoenix working out and people talk about him or i'll be back at home people talk about him so case is like is a is a household name um but just the family be on campus is it's great to see uh, our fans are the best fans in the country so um everybody is on level uh, celery savage but case is it's like high level at the highest level of it it's good to see you know he's deserving of it um being that we came in together and um just seeing his growth um on the court and off the court as well. It's just happy. I'm just happy to see him get his flowers. Were you guys surprised at all? I mean, I, you, you've been saying for years this guy can really shoot, but, like, it just felt like he flipped a switch, and all of a sudden he was one of the two or three best players in the league. I mean, it was crazy. It, it, yeah, it, was, it really was remarkable. And some of the stats, you know, people see Kese and they think, all right, he's a great shooter. But a stat that, to me, uh, you know, kind of shows his overall growth as a player. He was second in our conference in two-point field goal percentage. Yeah. And this is the biggest league with Zach Eady, Trace Jackson Davis, Hunter Dickinson. And Casey's two-point percentage was higher than all of them. So that just shows how well he cuts, moves without the ball. He's obviously the focal point in the game plan, but he's still found a way to go out and get his numbers. Uh, and these guys will tell you the way he is going out in practice right now, the momentum he built from the World Cup and that game clincher to get them into the Olympics. He had 18 points in six minutes in the first half, finished with 22. <laughs> and, you know, it just was one of five NCAA players playing for their national team, and he's carried that over. So to have the type of year he did, to carry that over into the World Cup, playing for his home team in his home country, and now, you know, coming back. And, you know, the, he's so level-headed. Steph Curry, you know, not very many guys get a tweet from Steph Curry, uh, but he just stays so level-headed through it all. And it is fun because of how he approaches the game. He is such an infectious person personality and he plays with such a joy so to see the level of success that he's had has been a lot of fun I think not only for us as a staff but for his teammates as well it's fun for us too I mean he's a really fun player to watch he and, and CJ hit it on yeah. the head I mean we go into opposing arenas and people are in awe of this of this guy yeah. so it's it's pretty cool to see super cool all right guys best of luck this year thanks for spending a few minutes here with us yeah, for sure Iowa Hawkeyes, fresh off an NCAA tourney appearance. He does not have any eligibility left, Coach. You cannot get Evan Turner out on the court for you. But that was a nice effort. Well, you know, he he, he remembers fondly 2009. Yeah. Sienna Saints in double overtime over oh. the Ohio State Buckeyes. Onions. State. Onions. Double order. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Patrick. Look at you. You're, you're, yeah. you're, rubbing, you're rubbing it in his face. Well, no, it's the first thing he brought up. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah. He, he does it all the time. <laughs> yeah, he, he, what a what a tremendous yeah, person! Yeah, he's awesome. A great yeah. player. He's great, uh, but, but really just a genuine guy. Fun, funny. So we had a good time. All right.
All right, glad you could take that trip down memory lane. Fran McCaffrey, Patrick McCaffrey, Tony Perkins here as, as we preview the Iowa Hawkeyes season. I, I said something going to break that I want to ask you about right off the top because it always seems like this is a program that has a centerpiece player, that has a guy who you kind of know is going to score, if not 20, close to 20 for you on any given night. Let me ask you first, is that the case this year? Well, I certainly hope so. So is there a guy, like, who's the candidate to be? Well, I got two of them on my left. Okay. That both plan on making that a reality. Right. But there's another one over there, Peyton Sanford. He, yeah. He, he could also be that guy. But I, I do think we have a lot of weapons. We have a lot of guys who can score. We're probably deeper than we've been. Right. Uh, you know, obviously when you have Garza and when you have Keegan, yes. that, that's different. Okay. But let's think about it. Last year at this time, I mean, Chris Murray was coming off averaging nine points a game. Right. It's not like you can say, okay, he, he was gonna, he's definitely going to be that guy. Gonna be gone, but that's right. what I love about Chris. And and he said, I'm coming back. I'm turning down a two-way. I'm coming back. I'm going to average 20. I'm going to go in the first round. I'm going to bet on myself. So I was so proud of him for taking that approach. So somebody now is going to have to do the same thing that he did. Okay. So, Tony, I think a lot of people think, you potentially could be that guy. We saw some huge moments from you last year. How do you take the step? How do you go take the step from being a really good player to being, if, if, it, if it is you, and Patrick, I'm going to ask you the same question, to being the best player? Um, just stay in the gym. Um, keep uh, letting Coach McCaffrey lead the way for me. Um, tell me things that he needs for me, want me to do, to be the player I want to be, and just stay in the gym, working out um, and doing and being the best person I can be and best player I can be every day. How about you, Patrick? Yeah, I think just uh, being consistent with your work habits. Uh, you know, I, I do the same thing every day. I go and work out, you know, go get some lunch, go back to practice. Uh, so just kind of being consistent with what you do every day and just, you know, try to be the best player I can be. Play really hard, play smart, lead the young guys, and, you know, all that other stuff, the scoring and all that, it takes care of itself. Tell us about some of the additions. Ben Kirkie, I know, is, is a player who you think very highly about. Uh, how can he fit in and, and perhaps emerge as a star for you? No question, Dave. Ben's a guy that we have great expectation for. He has great ex expectation for himself. I mean, he averaged almost 20 a game in the Missouri Valley, led the Missouri Valley in scoring, 6'9", 245. He's, I think, 23 years old. So he's a guy that we kind of penciled into that position. So he could be a guy that falls into the category you were just referring to. Fits very well with these two and Peyton. Uh, just a veteran guy who knows how to play, who can score, who can rebound, and can play fast the way we play. So uh, I'm excited about him. Uh, Evan Bronze is another transfer starting center at Belmont. Uh, another guy who's 23, 6'9", 245. So we're bigger than we've been. But then you look at the freshman class, which I think you were asking about. You know, Owen Freeman, Laji Dembele. You know, Laji 6'8", probably 255. And Owen's, uh, you know, 6'10", probably 240. So we're much bigger than we were last year. You think about, you know, Connor, Chris, Philip Abracha, they play 3,000 minutes. That's a lot of minutes for three guys. Yeah. We have much more flexibility this year, especially with big guys. And then you add Price Sanford and, and Brock Harding, Mr. Basketball in Iowa and Mr. Basketball in Illinois. So we're looking at those guys to come in and contribute right away. So you factor in Josh Dix, DeSante Bowen, uh, who were really good players for us last year. You know, no question, the point you made earlier, it's the deepest team we've had. Patrick, I want to ask you a little bit about your journey last year. I had incredible admiration for you. You and I talked for quite a while in the tunnel after one of the games before you you came back. You, you very publicly said, hey, here's what I'm dealing with. Um, what did you learn about yourself and, and about your teammates as you kind of went through that last year? Yeah, um, I don't think anything specifically through my teammates because I knew whatever I decided to do, they were going to be very supportive of me. Um, you know, the hardest part about that process was me having to tell my teammates that I needed to take a step back. Uh, but they were all very supportive. It was an emotional conversation. Um, but overall, you know, I, it, just, I, it was really important to me to kind of, you know, be authentic and uh, really put myself out there and, you know, uh, be, uh, be vulnerable. So people were able to see, you know, that everybody goes through things like that. Uh, nobody's immune. Um, so I, I learned a lot about myself, and I'm still working through a lot of different stuff, uh, stuff to make me feel better. I still have bad days. I still have those moments. So, you know, it's just kind of something that I'll be working through for, for the rest of my life, I think. And you just kind of find ways to cope and you find ways to manage. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm in a much better place, and I'm, I'm really excited for, for the year. 
What was that like for you as a dad and as a coach in, in that dual role? Well, it, it was it was very challenging, very emotional for all of us, no question. Uh, you know, it happened right after a road game. We were on the plane, and, and he was really struggling. You could see it. Uh, you know, we didn't play well that night. We lost, and it's like, Patrick, it wasn't your fault. I mean, a lot of things went wrong, and, and but he was, I just need a break, okay? And, and I don't want to be open about it. Okay, I, I, that's admirable. And, and, and we encouraged him to do that if that's what he wanted to do. Uh, I do remember the conversation Patrick referenced. Uh, it was very emotional for him uh, to get in front of the team and tell them what he was going through. Everybody hugged him. Uh, and then he came back. He was very adamant. Like, I'm coming back. Like, I'm going to come back and I'm going to help this team. And very first game, he had three threes, I think, against Rutgers. Yes. We beat Rutgers at home, a very yes. good team. Uh, I remember, I think we had five threes against Nebraska, the last uh, regular season game. Six. So it was, <laughs> it was great to see. So, uh, you know, I just think so many people have reached out. I mean, uh, he's had conversations with NBA players. Uh, so many people have stepped up to try to help him. And that's what we do. You know, we rally around those who are struggling and, and figure out ways to help them. Well, really proud of you it was amazing to see you come back and and again understand um how many people are rooting for you how many people are in your corner and excited to see you back out on the court this year thanks dave appreciate that okay all right take care fellas appreciate it dave best Thank of you. luck to appreciate the hawkeyes this year yep have Thank a great you. year dawson garcia chosen preseason all big 10 one of 10 players so honored the hometown hero back in minneapolis he joins us now along with Pharrell Payne, as, lo- as well as uh, Coach Ben Johnson. Dawson, I want to start with you. I mean, it's pretty neat to be honored in that way. What did you learn about yourself in, in year one playing in the Big Ten, and, and how do you think that could propel you forward this year? Uh, one thing I learned about myself and then this group as well is just re- uh, resiliency, and I think that's going to be a big thing for us this year because it doesn't matter what day it is in the Big Ten. Um you got another opponent coming at you that's a um, very tall ask and so just continuing to push through and find find ways to win Pharrell you probably learned a lot I would assume last year too I mean you were thrust into a situation where you played an awful lot as a freshman How, w- what were the biggest lessons that you learned that you can carry forward to this year when you're expected to be you know a, a one of the focal points of this team Um, I'd say one of the biggest lessons I learned is just like you just got to keep on going if you get knocked down you know you got to pick yourself up keep on going and work hard even harder Uh, coach as as you look at these guys and as you try to build this team you finally feel like you have some veteran pieces I know to, to build around how does that change the equation for you guys heading into this year to have guys who have been through it and who know what this league's all about it's nice because you're not reteaching everything, right? You have a system in place, whether it's offense or defense, and you have returners that can speak that language to the new guys, whether it's a freshman or transfer. So to not start at the very bottom with your teaching, you're building off stuff from last year, especially with these two guys and what they were able to do at the end of the season. Um, as a coach, that's very comforting. Tell me about your backcourt. It is, uh, you know, again, some new pieces this year. How do you feel about this group? Because that, to me, it, it felt like at times last year, and you and I talked about this when we did the games, you struggled to get into your offense. Yeah, no, I think this year we have depth across the board, which we haven't had. Um, whether it's a freshman in Cam Christie, who's kind of mature above his years, um, Elijah Hawkins, Mike Mitchell, Braden Carrington, Josh Ola Joseph, who we've now moved over, the addition of Isaiah Enan, who hasn't you know been in the mix because of injury the last couple of years. It just brings a certain amount of depth to what we have and versatility, which is what we love. So really working with those guys every day. Um, I know they have an excitement level and hunger um, to really develop and grow as perimeter players, and, and they'll be a big key of what we're trying to do. We've talked a lot about Isaiah through the years, and yeah, he's had such bad luck with injuries. I know a player who you felt really good about from the moment you arrived on campus. He could be a huge part of what you were trying to do. Where is he in his return to, to play here? 
No, Isaiah's great. Um, both him and Parker um, are able to, to Fox, go, yeah. to go yeah. full contact now. So we haven't had that in two years. So it's nice to have a, a full roster um, that you're able to work with in practice. But Isaiah's been really good. His rehab was, was phenomenal. Um, both him and Parker's confidence is where it needs to be, and, and they're mentally in a good place. And I think they're really ready to roll up their sleeves and compete. Dawson, what does it mean to have those two guys in the mix? Yeah, it means a lot. Uh, just seeing them, you know, I was only there um, for one year of their recovery, but both those guys are uh, really resilient dudes. And uh, just to see them on the court and uh, being effective and having high energy and their, you know, athleticism back and looking really good, it's just uh, it's really cool to see. And I'm happy for both of them. Uh, that speaks to a bigger issue, which is the injuries were just crazy last year. I mean, at one point, I remember you saying you even had a couple managers who were hurt, right? I mean, like that just that just doesn't happen. But how do you kind of learn from that as a group? And, and how does that maybe accelerate the process for someone like Pharrell, who, who maybe wouldn't have been in that position had it not been for the injuries, not the injuries to the managers, but the injuries right. to the players? <laughs> well, you know, no question. Um, it kind of threw those guys to the fire. Right. But experience is the best teacher. And although, you know, it was fast and in a hurry with the three freshmen that we had last year, you can't teach that development that they went through. And for those guys to be able to do what they did, you know, in the best conference in the country as true freshmen, as 18 year olds, should only give them confidence from here going forward. And so we'll be able to fall back on that. They'll be able to fall back on that and, and hopefully use that this year. Pharrell, it's always interesting to kind of get to know the backstories of players and, and your family is really interesting, right? Your, your parents both emigrated from Cameroon. They're both nurses. What, what have you learned from them, from their life experience that you think translates to you as a person and translates to you on the court? Uh, something that I definitely learned from my parents is that they always worked hard. Coming to this country not having much, they worked their butts off for what they've had. So I kind of took that and like applied it to my own life. How, is, is that something that they teach by example or is that something like if you had conversations with them about that? It's a teach by example thing. Okay, all right. Um, Dawson, for you, kind of being back in Minneapolis, your hometown, and 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 being you know the focal point of this team, what has that meant for you to to be back here? Uh, it means a lot, um, and it just means a lot that um, I'm surrounded by a lot of guys on this team from Minnesota as well. And then anybody that's from out of the state, you know, we've really brought them in and acclimated them to the uh, to the greatness of Minnesota, and so. It's a, it's a privilege, it's an honor to have that Minnesota across your chest and just being from here, it's a little bit of extra level of that prize, like I mentioned uh, before. Now ben, you and I have talked a little bit about this, that you're of course from Minnesota, you played at Minnesota. How important is it for you to, to lock down this state, to have the stars from Minnesota? You're not gonna get all of them, but to have a, a good group of, of players that are in-state guys that have pride in, in being from here. No question. I think, you know, any program, you know, the lifeblood is recruiting and you would really love for it to be in your backyard. Right. Uh, those guys like a Dawson or a Pharrell or Josh or Braden um, grew up watching go for basketball. There's a familiarity with it, whether it's them or their family. And you want to carry that tradition with those guys. And so, um, you know, we'll continue to find the right ones that fit and that that work with our program and continue to develop them. Um, these guys and their success is a big part of that. Um, and we want kids to know that you can come to Minnesota and still live out all your all your goals and wishes as a player and a student athlete. What does it mean to have the tournament here in Minneapolis this year? No, I love it. It's obviously something new. Uh, I think it's something that uh, hopefully our state will get really behind and support not only our conference but our team. Uh, we want to put ourselves in position to have that be a meaningful tournament for us and, and hopefully some postseason play. All right, well, all the other guys came up here and we had pictures of them in front of the Jets that they took to get here and, and whatnot. You guys have to fight twins traffic on the way back, so I should let you go. We, we do. Right? You need to get back to, to campus we, before everything picks I'll, up I'll, here downtown. I'll gladly take the five-minute drive. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fellas. Best of luck this year. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank all right, we'll see you.